Hello friends. This is Fanfic Universe. How are you all? So in this video, we will see, what if Naruto was the legendary Ice King of Konoha? Here is short summary. After an attack by the villagers Naruto discovers he has a Keke Jenke and deciding he's had enough with the treatment he's getting from the villagers he leaves under the cover of darkness not to return for several years and when he returns he might just find his queens. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. It was a warm summer's night in Konohagakure and running down the darkened streets of the market district we find a mob of villagers at least 40 strong several of their numbers being Shinobi and Kunoichi, and what was this mob doing you may ask, they were chasing a small boy around the age of 5 or 6. Please no please no I don't want to die, said the boy as he ran, this boy was none other than Naruto Uzumaki son of the late, Red Reaper, Kashina Uzumaki and late, Yellow Flash, Minato Namikaze and the Jinchuriki of the Kiyubi. It's for that reason alone that the mob of villagers were chasing the boy, none of the members of the mob believed he was that. Get back here demon, yelled one of the members of the mob, with that the young boy ran faster. Naruto looking back and seeing the mob was further back than he figured, Naruto then ducked down an alleyway, before quickly hiding behind a dumpster. The blonde rather quickly and with practiced ease slowed his breathing trying to hide his presence. We know you're there you little bastard, came a voice from the end of the alleyway. Naruto foolishly looked out from behind his dumpster only for the eyes of all of the mob members to lock onto him. Nowhere left to run demon, spat a man with a sadistic smirk crossing his face. Out of fear, Naruto tried to move further away from the mob only to realize it was futile and he began to cry, which enraged the mob further at the idea of the demon trying to act human. In their rage they failed to notice the alley growing colder and colder until part of the alley began freezing over and just before the mob was attacking Naruto the ice that was on the walls shot out in large spikes impaling all of the villagers. Naruto who had his eyes shut tight and his hands up in a defensive position heard a sickening squelch sound, and opened his eyes as a warm liquid hit his face, the scene before him horrified the young boy, who threw up what remained of his dinner before standing up and stumbling out of the alley. I can't take this anymore, muttered the boy running home. Hash Naruto's apartment Hash Naruto burst into his house and quickly walked into his room and grabbed a bag and put it on his bed. Before walking around the small space of his apartment. To his cupboard where he grabbed out all of his clothes. To his kitchen where his instant ramen was, to his lounge room where he flipped his couch over. Before reaching for one of three floorboards that was loose. Pulling them up revealing a small gap where all of Naruto's important positions lay. His toad wallet which had all of his money, a case which Naruto opened and pulled out the object which lay within. His only weapon, a compound bow, he only had it for hunting so he didn't need to eat only ramen. Next within the gap was his quiver with 40 arrows in it with a vacuum seal at the bottom preventing any of the arrows from coming out without an application of chakra. And lastly was a necklace he was told it was the only thing he had with him when he was put in the orphanage, the necklace was a red circle with a black spiral within. Naruto looked at it for a moment before putting it on. Naruto after putting the floorboards back and flipping the couch back slung the quiver over his shoulder and pocketed his wallet and picked up his bow before walking into his room making sure he had all he needed in his bag, he strapped it to his back before walking out to the kitchen where he quickly wrote a note for his adoptive grandfather, before once more leaving his apartment, before then heading to the gates. Hashtag at the gates hash Naruto found himself sitting on the roof of a building nearby the gates looking down at the guards who were both asleep, Naruto rolled his eyes at the pair of them before dropping from the roof and running out of the gates not to return until he felt he was ready. On a road in a forest just outside of Konohagakure we find a pair of men walking down the road, one man was reasonably tall with waist length, spiky white hair tied back into a ponytail, with two shoulder length bangs that framed both sides of his face. He also had red lines that ran down from his eyes and wore a horned forehead protector with the kanji for oil the man wore a green short shirt kimono and matching pants, under which he wore mesh armor that showed out of the sleeves and legs of his outfit. His outfit was completed with handguards, a simple black belt, wooden sandals, a red haori with two simple yellow circles on each side, and a scroll on his back. This man was Jiraiya one of Konoha's Sanin. The other man stood just short of Jiraiya's shoulders. He had short-ish blonde hair with a pair of bangs framing his face with the rest tied into a short ponytail. There were however red streaks in his hair and the tips of his bangs were a deep blood red, 
This man wore a sleeveless blue shirt, over the top of which was a black tattered-ish trench coat, for pants he wore a pair of blue pants taped down at the ankles he wore a yellow belt with three pouches attached to the back of it, on his feet was a pair of the regular black ninja sandals, on his hands was a pair of fingerless gloves. Staining the young man's skin was tattoos ranging from arctic foxes to the kanji for ice which was on his chest, and strapped to his back was a large bandaged wrapped object with a yellow handle with a skull at the tip this was his sword Samahata. This man was none other than Naruto Uzumaki returning to Konoha a little more than six years after he left in the dead of night. Come on kid I'm sure sensei's eager to see you're alright, said Jiraiya. Yeah I just hope the rest of the villagers aren't as eager, said Naruto in a flat tone as the two walked to the gates. Don't worry kid, they won't touch you while I'm around and we timed your return just so that this time tomorrow you should be a ninja so should they lay a hand on you you're allowed to use whatever means you deem necessary to defend yourself and they can't stop you, said Jiraiya. Thanks Oji-san, said Naruto looking up at his godfather with a smile. Yes the young blonde knew who his parents and godparents were when Jiraiya found him a little over six months prior he had told him who they were under the promise that he not reveal it to anyone else until he reached at least Chunin. The two men walked through the gates and simply signed themselves in seeing as both gate guards were asleep, that made Naruto roll his eyes, it seemed they hadn't upped security since he fled six years ago. The two men quickly walked towards the Hokage Tower. It seemed the villagers recognized Naruto but the blonde didn't care one little bit he was getting annoyed at the glares he was getting so just as the two men entered the market district Naruto started shooting glares that could freeze the fires of hell they were so cold at anyone who glared at him, that made all of the villagers stop. The two men quickly made it to the Hokage Tower and instead of using the door Naruto decided to run up the wall of an adjacent building before back flipping and slipping straight through an open window landing on the floor beside the Hokage's desk. Jiraiya decided against following Naruto's lead for fear of breaking through the window and simply jumped to the roof of the building Naruto back flipped off and then jumped onto the window before climbing through only to see Naruto smirking and Hiruzen's mouth agape. Look who I found sensei, said Jiraiya eerily calm as he stepped into the room, making Hiruzen jump and look at his student. My godson who I was told was dead, I found him wandering the streets of the capital of the land of fire, said Jiraiya in same eerily calm manner. Now Jiraiya calm down there's a perfectly good explanation, said Hiruzen sweating bullets. Aero Sanin, said Naruto distracting his godfather from his task. Oh right before you go on sensei, Naruto is to be put into the genin class that's taking their exams tomorrow, declared Jiraiya, Hiruzen quickly nodded. Thanks Gigi, said Naruto with a grin. I'll see you later Oji-san said Naruto leaping through the open window onto the roof opposite the tower before taking off by rooftop towards the Hokage mountain. Hashtag next morning academy hash Naruto walked into down the hallway towards he classroom he was told he needed to go to by his godfather after apparently beating the Hokage up for lying to him about Naruto's fate, Jiraiya having been told Naruto perished in the Kyubi attack. A222 ah, here it is, said Naruto sliding the door open to see a grand total of three people in the room one was a chunin with a scar across his nose, with black eyes and dark brown hair tied into a fanned out ponytail, the second was a boy sitting in the back of the room he had spiky dark brown hair, with a pair of glasses leaving the boy's eyes undistinguishable, the last was a boy with dark blue hair spiked up into roughly shape of a duck's ass and he had charcoal black eyes. Take a seat, said the chunin, Naruto nodded and walked up to the very back desk closest to the window and pulled Samahata off his back sitting it next to him before take the seat next to the window, the blonde then kicked back and looked out of the window. Naruto watched as the classroom slowly began to fill up with students, first was a boy with spiky brown hair, with slits for pupils in his otherwise bare eyes and a dog riding his head, his cheeks bore a pair of red fang-like marks. The next student caught Naruto by surprise, nothing to do with her short dark blue hair or her pupil less white eyes no it was the fact that she saw him and walked straight up to him. H hello why why you might and not remember me bb but a about six years ago you saved me ff from some bb bullies, said the girl. Unknown to either the young blonde or the blue haired girl making the boy with the dog raise his eyebrows. That's him, that's where I know him, thought the boy. Yes I remember, said Naruto raising an eyebrow. I w wanted tt to say th thank you, stuttered the girl. Oh uh no no problem, declared Naruto with a smile before looking away from the girl. Who promptly nodded and walked over to the seat next to the dog boy. Next people to enter the room were a pair of boys, 
One was a lanky boy with black hair tied up in a fanned out ponytail and brown eyes. The boy had a lazy air about him. He was talking with the second boy as the two of them entered. The second boy was a larger boy with light brown hair, black eyes and a pair of swirls on his cheeks. He had a bag of chips in his hand and ate with a quick speed as the two of them walked up the stairs and took a pair of seats at the table next to Naruto's. Then other children just started pouring into the room, but by this point Naruto had just tuned them out and started reading a book. His attention was however drawn back when he heard what could only be described as a stampede outside the classroom. I'm going to win Eno Pig, roared a female voice. Like hell you were foread, declared another voice. Naruto snapped his book shut interested to see what the two voices were arguing about. Just then the door was just short of ripped off its roller and in slipped a pink haired girl. Ha suck it Eno Pig I get to sit next to Sasuke Kun. Screamed the shrill female voice the owner of which was dancing around. Really they were fighting over a seat? Questioned Naruto looking down as a girl with bluish eyes and platinum blonde hair walked. What was that? Screeched the girl glaring at Naruto. Oi Sakura shut up you yelling is hurting my ears, said the dog boy drawing the pink haired girl's attention to him. Who asked you dog breath? Spat the girl. All right everyone let's just calm down you two take your seats, declared the chunin the two girls quickly took the previously unoccupied seats next to the duck butt haired boy. In case any of you missed it we have a new student joining us for the exams, said the chunin motioning to Naruto. How come he can just join on the day of the exams I thought it was compulsory to attend classes, asked, duck butt, in an annoyed tone. Training outside of the village for years will do that, and the sanin vouching for my skills doesn't hurt either, said Naruto somewhat sarcastically. This caused the boy to turn back to Naruto and glare at him. Spin on it, said Naruto flipping the guy the bird, the glare only intensified. All right you two break it up we have a test to begin, said the chunin as another chunin walked into the room holding a stack of papers, he began handing all of them out, once all of the papers were handed out the first chunin spoke once more. All right turn over and begin, said the man, Naruto flipped the paper over and began reading the questions. This? This is what they want Genin to know it's ing pathetic, thought Naruto. Damn this place has gone downhill since I last saw one of these tests, spoke a feminine voice inside Naruto's head. I didn't wake you did I Akane-chan? asked Naruto. No I woke up a while ago and now I'm so bored, spoke the voice. You and me both Akane-chan, replied Naruto his hand on autopilot writing the answers to the questions. Why don't you come in here and we can entertain each other, slurred the voice in a Y tone. Arrow Fox muttered Naruto looking back at the paper in front of him. Oh look a question that's slightly harder, thought Naruto. Why don't you some in here so I can make you hard, spoke the voice in his mind. Will you please, just not? asked the irate blonde. Oh please don't pretend you don't love it, declared the voice. Why did I even agree to that deal? questioned Naruto. Because from it you got a summoning contract and free use of up to two tails of my yukai, declared the voice in his head. And if I'd known how much of a perv you were I would have thought more seriously about the deal, countered Naruto. Oh Naruto-kun you wound me so why must you hurt me in such a way? Questioned the voice dramatically. Oh stop being a drama queen, said Naruto, his mind was then assaulted by an image of a woman with pale-ish skin, long white hair with a pair of fox-like ears on top of her head, light blue eyes with slitted pupils, nine fluffy tails and dressed in a white kimono pouting. That was mean Nawu kun said the voice in a baby voice tone. You're a sweet girl I'm sure you can forgive me, said Naruto. The owner of the voice was feeling thankful that Naruto couldn't see her or her colossal blush. It was at this point Naruto finished the test quickly putting his pen down he flipped the paper before putting his head down to take a short nap. Alright everyone pencils down test time is over, said the scared Chunin. Okay now we're going to take a break so I can grade you papers so everyone outside and hand me your tests on your way out, said the man. Slowly but surely everyone in the room stood up and walked out of the classroom handing the chunin their papers on the way out. Naruto waited until everyone else had gone before picking up Samahada then walking down and placing his test on the chunin's desk and walking out of the classroom and outside where instead of joining the rest of the class Naruto walked over to the nearest tree and simply jumped up onto the lowest branch pulled Samahada off his back putting it on his lap before leaning back against the tree trunk before closing his eyes. Oi you fight me, came a voice Naruto recognized from the class he joined, Naruto just ignored the voice. 
Oi you up in the tree I'm talking to you, said the voice, making the blonde open his eyes and look down at the duck butt haired boy glaring at him. Go away, said Naruto. I said fight me, ordered the boy. Leave me the hell alone you're not worth my time, said Naruto yawning. I said fight me right now and while you're at it give me that sword a worthless peasant like you doesn't deserve a weapon like that, said the boy. Naruto stood up and put Samahata on his back before a small snowstorm kicked up around him and then he was gone, making Duck Butt growl having to look for him again. Naruto now sat on the railing on the roof of the academy looking down on the kids in the yard all running around like idiots. Hashtag half an hour later hash the chunin from the class walked out of the building evidently having finished marking the tests. All right you lot to the kanai range, called the chunin. Naruto waited until everyone was around a corner before dropping from the roof and followed behind the group stealthily to the kanai range where he stood far enough away none of the class would notice him excluding the chunin, but was close enough to hear the explanation. All right everyone this is a test of your aim. You will each be given five kanai not hitting a target will result in no points. The outermost ring will be one point all the way down to the center ring being worth 10 points, said the chunin. Bonus points will be allocated if you hit the targets from further away, declared the chunin. Do we have to use kanai or is this a test of true aim? questioned Naruto startling some people. What are you asking to use? questioned the chunin, in a puff of smoke a compound bow appeared in Naruto's hand. This, declared Naruto. A bow? Hum yes that's an acceptable substitute, said the chunin getting a nod from Naruto. Is there anyone that wants to go first? asked the chunin, Duckbit raised his hand. All right Sasuke you can go first, said the chunin, Sasuke walked back until he was about 30 meters from the targets pulling out five kanai, before throwing all five at once towards the targets all bar one hit dead center and the last was off just enough that it was in the second from the center ring. Good job Sasuke, 49 points plus another 30 for distance gives you 79 points, said the chunin, Sasuke strode forwards arrogantly. Beat that blondie, declared Sasuke as he passed Naruto who raised an eyebrow. Sure, said Naruto with a smirk, as Sasuke collected his weapons. So anyone want to go next? asked the chunin, Naruto raised his hand. All right Naruto you're up, said the man. Naruto turned around and walked towards the gates of the academy grounds, to everyone's surprise he walked out of the grounds crossing the street into an alley where he walked halfway up the wall where he stood and faced back at the academy. Everyone's head snapped to the target as an arrow hit dead center of the target and before any comment could be made a second arrow split the first from knock to tip, then another, and another, and another. Show off, declared a voice in Naruto's head. You always like when I show off for you, replied Naruto. It took the time for Naruto to return for Iruka to come to his senses. Well done Naruto perfect 50 for aim and the max of 100 bonus points for distance, said Iruka. Naruto nodded and pulled his arrows out of the target before walking back to the shocked crowd of Genin hopefuls. Kiba, you can go next, said the chunin snapping the kids out of the daze. Hashtag an hour later hash the group had finished with the target practice portion of the exams and had now moved on to the taijutsu portion which was a simple task of either lasting 5 minutes in the ring with the chunin or landing one decent hit on him. However the chunin fighting wasn't the scar-faced chunin. It was his white-haired friend, so far the platinum blonde and pink-haired girls had barely lasted 5 minutes, the girl who thanked Naruto scored a hit within a minute despite her nervousness, the dog boy landed a hit within the second minute, the chubby boy landed a good hit in under a minute, the lazy pineapple headed boy lazily avoided all attacks for the five minutes, the cloaked sunglasses boy scored a punch in under half a minute as did duck butt and finally it was Naruto's turn. All right Naruto you're up, said the scared chunin, Naruto stepped into the ring, he could already see the chunin was acting less lax closing the openings in his stance. Great one of the bastards who thinks I'm you Akane chan, muttered Naruto. Kick his ass Naru kun and I'll give you a reward, said the voice in Naruto's head. The only reward I need from you is to see your beautiful smile, responded the blonde, once more making Akane glad Naruto couldn't see her. And begin, called the scar faced Chunin. The white haired Chunin immediately charged at Naruto before throwing a punch at the boy, who leaned back into a bicycle kick, hitting the Chunin in the chin, knocking his head upwards. Naruto landed the flip on his two hands and then in a blink of an eye he shot both of his feet forwards and buried them in the chunin's gut with enough force to force the man back and out of the ring. W well done Naruto, stuttered the chunin, 
Naruto simply stood up and smoothed out his trench coat before walking back over to the students. All right, all of you head back inside for the ninjutsu portion of the exam, said Iruka. The students all slowly made their way back inside, all taking their seats again, before the scar faced Chunin walked into the room. All right, we will call you one by one into the other room where the ninjutsu portion of the test will be held, declared Iruka. And first up, we have Shino, said the Chunin walking out with coat and glasses boy following closely behind. Hashtag an hour later, hash Naruto sat in his seat at the back of the room. He had spent the time analyzing the people in the class. Most were unimpressive, more than likely to die on the first mission out of the village. There were a few that had caught his attention, Dogboy was one. He from what Naruto had seen would make for a reasonable sparring partner if he were paired up with another. The ones that Naruto thought could fill that hole were the Apology Girl and the Glasses Boy. Duck but maybe but the blonde just knew the two of them would never get along and more than likely the duck but idiot would say something stupid planting a huge target on his head with the bullseye right between the eyes and Naruto always hit the bullseye. The lazy kid struck Naruto as interesting company as did the fat boy but he felt he should wait until he was put on a team before trying to become friends with anyone. Naruto had watched as one by one people left the room and after a few moments all of them had returned with a headband somewhere on their persons. Finally after an hour of waiting Iruka poked his head through the door. Naruto you're up, said Iruka. Naruto nodded and strapped his sword to his back before walking out of the classroom and over to the next door one, where he found within Iruka, the silver-haired Chunin who was scowling at him and then several more Chunin. All right Naruto we need you to perform a Kawarimi no Jutsu, said Iruka. Naruto nodded and then in a puff of smoke he was gone and replaced with a log, and then in another puff of smoke he was back. Good next henge, declared Iruka. Naruto nodded and again in a plume of smoke he was gone this time replaced with a man some of the chunin were familiar with but only due to his reputations in bingo books. The man standing before them was the monster of the hidden mist. Kisame Hoshigaki and again once more Naruto was back in a plume of smoke. Good work Naruto although I do have to ask why Kisame Hoshigaki? Questioned Iruka. That is nobody's business but my own, declared Naruto not really wanting to reveal to the Chunins he had been trained personally by Kisame, before the man's untimely passing, hence where Naruto got Samahata from, it's not that he was ashamed of his tutelage under the monster of the mist far from it he just felt they didn't need to know. Fair enough. All right Naruto finally a bunch in jutsu, said Iruka. Naruto once more nodded however this time he did some hand signs, however the signs themselves were unusual. Kori Bunshin no Jutsu, Ice Clone Jutsu, said Naruto as the air near him froze into a solid form creating an exact copy of the blonde. Aruka's jaw dropped at the blonde's display. WWW well done Naruto here, stuttered Aruka holding out a black clothed headband which Naruto quickly took and tied around his forehead before walking out of the room and back to the classroom. Hashtag several hours later hash it was now early evening. About 8.30 and Naruto was walking back to his godfather's place, the two of them had gone out to Ichiraku Ramen for a congratulatory dinner for Naruto passing his test Naruto having stayed longer than Jiraiya to catch up with the father-daughter duo who owned the stand, Naruto was now on his way home. The blonde walked past the Hokage Tower when out of the corner of his eyes he spotted signs of movement, turning his head towards the movement he spotted the silver-haired Chunin from his test earlier, however he was trying to be stealthy and on his back was a scroll. He was currently jumping towards the front gates of the village. Naruto narrowed his eyes and jumped to a nearby roof before following the man. Naruto took a careful look at the scroll on the Chunin's back and his eyes narrowed once more. It was the scroll of seals, something no Chunin should be in possession of. His eyes narrowed further when the man bolted straight out of the gates past the two sleeping Chunin gate guards. Naruto growled at the laziness of the two men before following the Chunin. What's a genin like you gonna be able to do to me? Questioned Mizuki arrogantly glaring down at Naruto clearly forgetting the beating Naruto dished out not hours ago. Do you wanna see fine, declared Naruto ripping his blade off his back and leaping forwards at the silver-haired Chunin who pulled one of the two Fuma shuriken off of his back to block the blade, Naruto swung Samahata down on the giant shuriken, Mizuki expected the blade to be stopped by his giant shuriken but no, Naruto's strength had greatly increased from their spars and the shuriken was forced out of Mizuki's hand lest it break his hand that is not the weapon. I was holding back most of my strength during our spar Mizuki, I didn't want to cripple a comrade no matter their opinion of me but now I know you're a traitor I can go all out, 
declared Naruto a smirk crossing his face sitting the sharkskin blade on his shoulder. Mizuki was about to speak only for Naruto to hit him in the gut in with the Samahata and at the same time Samahata sucked out some of his chakra. What the hell did you do to me? Growled Mizuki clutching his slightly cut stomach. Naruto said nothing but ran forwards one hand around Samahata's handle the other clouded by an icy mist. Mizuki flipped back to avoid the blade of Samahata however he landed within range for Naruto to lunge forward with his mist covered hand to grab his arm making the temperature of the limb to drop. Let go of me, growled Mizuki kicking Naruto who jumped back to avoid the attack. Fine you wanna be like that Kirigakure no jutsu, ninja art hidden mist jutsu, called Naruto mist forming around the area hiding him from Mizuki's sight. Where are you demon? Ordered Mizuki looking around for the blonde. Mizuki felt extreme pain form in his back causing him to drop to the ground screaming. Alright I was going to toy with you but now I'm going to murder you, roared Mizuki as he pulled out a bottle of liquid which was quickly uncorked and he downed the contents in one gulp. Mizuki then stood up as the wound on his back began to stitch itself back together as Mizuki's chakra skyrocketed while also becoming a vile inhuman chakra. Mizuki's body began growing hair all over turning him into what looked like a bipedal tiger. Really? This guy had to be working for Orochimaru didn't he? Muttered Naruto concealed by his mist as he watched the transformation. Naruto jumped forwards to once more slice at Mizuki with Samahata but the tiger man ducked bellow the strike. Ha not so tough now or ya you little f u u u u u c c c c c k k k k k said Mizuki ending in a scream as Naruto slammed his mist coated hand into Mizuki's chest freezing the immediate area before slowly spreading out as Mizuki fell to the ground dead as Naruto literally froze his blood and heart. A little over the top for you Naru kun came the voice of Akane. That was a modified curse mark there's no telling what he could have done, replied Naruto. The blonde then walked over to the downed Chunin and picked him up before throwing him in the scroll over his shoulder before walking back into the village, the blonde walked towards the Hokage tower. It took longer than normal but not by much, ignoring the secretary who was nose deep in work anyway Naruto walked up the stairs only to see the doors of the Hokage's office shut. Who would steal the forbidden scroll? Questioned a voice from within, Naruto opened the door and stepped inside, where all eyes fell on him. I believe you may be looking for this Hokage-sama, said Naruto throwing the scroll to the aged leader. How did you come by this Naruto-kun? asked Hiruzen. I was walking home past the tower and I saw this little shit, said Naruto gesturing to the body slung over his shoulders. Doing some shady shit I mean shady even for ninja so I followed him when I noticed the scroll strapped to his back I caught up and engaged him, after disabling him I returned here to return the scroll to you, said Naruto. Well done Naruto you will be given B rank pay for this, leave the traitor and you are dismissed, remember you are expected to be at the academy tomorrow by 8, said Hiruzen getting a nod from the young blonde, Naruto dropped the traitor before turning on his heels and leaving the room. Hashtag street hash Naruto was walking down the street once more on his way home when he spotted something out of the corner of his eyes, the blonde walked over to an alleyway when at the end of the alleyway he saw something that made his ice cold blood boil. Halfway down the alleyway there were two men standing there and between them was a woman who formed the looks of it was drunk and drugged at the same time. Both men were slowly undressing the purple haired woman. Just relax snake whore we'll make this fun for you, declared one man pulling down the woman's skirt while the other man fondled the woman's. You two need to learn to respect women, said a voice from behind the two men before both were quickly knocked out, just as the woman passed out as she fell to the ground only to be caught by Naruto just before she hit the ground that's when his eyes locked on a mark on her neck. Akane-chan I need your help, said Naruto in his mind. Small amount of yukai coming up, declared the voice from in Naruto's head, that's when he felt a warm chakra flood into his system before he put the woman down on the alley floor and quickly changeling chakra to his finger he drew an intricate fuenjutsu matrix which centered on her neck. That should about do it, muttered Naruto to himself. Fuen, seal said Naruto placing his hands on top of each other over the mark on the woman's neck. The area around the mark began to warm up quite a bit, as the Fuenjutsu matrix all crawled towards the woman's neck. Once the entire matrix had crawled up onto the woman's neck Naruto removed his hands and the mark on her shoulder was gone, Naruto smiled. I hope this helps you miss, said Naruto as he did what he should have done first and pulled up her skirt. Alright now what to do with you too? questioned Naruto turning around to face the attempted rapists. I'll deal with you in a while, 
muttered Naruto as he tied them up together in ninja wire before once more picking up the unconscious woman, who snuggled closer to him as he jumped to the roof of one of the nearby buildings before heading to the hospital hoping to just leave her outside knowing they wouldn't treat her if she was brought in by him. As Naruto jumped his mind floated back to the two men tied up in the alleyway thinking of suitable punishments. Without even noticing Naruto was at the hospital, quickly dropping to the ground, Naruto stealthily walked up to the doors and gently placed the woman down before jumping back to a roof across the street just watching making sure the woman was taken into the hospital, fortunately within moments of getting into a good viewing position the purple-haired woman was taken inside. Naruto nodded to himself and began his trek back to the tied-up men still trying to think of a punishment. Oh that's an evil idea, muttered Naruto as an idea popped into his head. You sneaky little, that is evil, came the voice from inside Naruto's mind just as Naruto dropped into the alleyway with an sadistic smirk plastered on his face, he picked up the two men and quickly ran to the TNI department headquarters before pulling out a piece of paper and writing something on it before putting it in the wire used to tie the men up before knocking on the doors and running. Within a moment a man with a heavily scared face wearing a black trench coat and bandana opened the door before looking down at the two men before a smirk spread across his face. You know all the secrets of Iwaha I doubt it but someone has to have a good reason for bringing you here let's find out what it is, said the man reaching down and yanking the two men up by the wire that bound them. Hashtag the next morning hash one Anko Mitarashi sat up in fright only to notice she was in the hospital she absent-mindedly ran her hand over her neck, only to notice something. It it's gone, said Anko her eyes shooting open wide as she ran her hand over where her curse mark used to reside. She jumped up and ran over to the nearest reflective surface and made sure she was right. It was then Anko heard the door open, she turned around and saw a woman with long black silky hair and blood red eyes, this woman was Kuranai Yuhi one of Anko's oldest friends. Nai Chan Nai Chan it's gone it's finally gone, said Anko excitedly running up to her friend. What? What's gone? Questioned Kuranai never seeing her friend this excited. Anko pulled her shirt aside showing Kuranai her neck. That ing cursed hickey, declared Anko, Kuranai gasped and traced her finger along Anko's neck where the curse mark used to be. Who removed it? Questioned Kuranai. I have no idea last thing I remember last night is almost getting raped again when someone saved me, but I need to find whoever got that ing mark off me I need to thank them, muttered Anko looking down. Hashtag at the academy hash Naruto sat at the back of the classroom the last of the ninja had entered the room, and the bell had gone. Alright people I will now reveal the Kunoichi and Shinobi rookies of the year, said Iruka with a smile looking out over the genin who were all looking at him with all of their attention. Okay for Kunoichi of the year we have Hanada, said Iruka giving a moment for everyone to clap for the shy Hayuga heiress. Good job Hina-chan, said the dog boy from beside the blushing girl. Thanks Kiba, muttered the girl. Alright everyone settle down, said Iruka and in an instant the entire class became deathly silent. Now for the shinobi of the year we have Naruto, said Iruka, drawing the blonde's attention down to the front. The class was silent for a moment before the dog boy began clapping, followed by Hanada, the dark coat boy, the lazy boy and the swirly cheeked boy. Naruto bowed a bit with an awkward smile. Okay everyone now onto the bit I'm sure you've all been waiting for team placements, said the chunin. The class burst into whispers. Naruto just looked at the genin around the room before rolling his eyes before putting his head on the table tuning out everything until his name came up. Team 7 Naruto Uzumaki, said Iruka making Naruto sit up and listen. Kiba Inazuka and Hanada Hayuga and your sensei will be Kakashi Hataki, said Iruka, Naruto smirked to himself, paired with a clan heir and heiress, under an A-ranked shinobi he could deal with that, the blonde boy looked to his two teammates who were looking back at him he nodded to them with a smirk on his face, Kiba smirked back while the Hayuga blushed a bit before nodding back to Naruto. And that's it you have a lunch break before your sensei will be here to pick you up, said Iruka with a smile. Alright where the hell is this guy? Questioned Kiba angrily Akamaru barking in agreement. It had been three hours since the sensei were supposed to pick up their teams, Naruto, Hanada and Kiba were the only ones still in the room waiting for Kakashi to show up, Naruto like Kiba was mad he was just better at hiding it and Hanada well Naruto could see despite her eyes being closed her left eye was twitching with anger. Naru-kun come in here I'll keep you entertained, came Akane's voice from inside Naruto's head speaking in a breathless tone. Arrow Fox, replied Naruto. You know you love me, spoke the woman, 
It was at this point thankfully the door opened revealing a silver-haired Jonan with a mask covering the lower half of his face and his headband covering his left eye. You three team seven? Asked the man getting a nod from the Jenin. My first impression of you is, you guys are boring meet me on the roof, declared the man disappearing in a swirl of leaves. I don't know about you but the last three hours waiting have made me hungry, said Naruto as he stood up with a thoughtful look on his face before turning to his teammates. Yeah I could go for some food now, said Kiba catching onto Naruto's suggestion and agreeing completely. You know what, what the hell let's go, said their angry Hyuga teammate before she walked out of the room with her two teammates in tow, the three of them left the academy and headed to Ichiruaku Ramen. It only took the trio about five minutes to get to the eating establishment. Oh Naruto-kun I wondered when you'd stop by today, and who is this? Asked Ayame as Naruto and his team walked into the ramen stand. Ayame Nichan these are my teammates Hanada Hayuga and Kiba Inazuka, introduced Naruto. So what will you have? Questioned Ayame as the three of them sat down. I'll have the usual, said Naruto Ayame nodded and wrote something down on a pad. I'll have the beef ramen, said Kiba. I think I'll hh have the miso ramen ppp please, said Hanada Ayame giggled at the girl and nodded before walking into the back and got started on their meals. Hashtag with Kakashi hash the silver haired Jonin had been waiting on the roof for more than 5 minutes for his genin to show up, he had actually got a good feeling about this group of genin he figured they might be the first team to ever pass his test. Where the hell are they? Asked Kakashi peeking over his book at the doorway where he had expected them to come running out of maybe a minute after he had sent them from the class but they were yet to arrive, and he was beginning to worry. I'll just go see if I can find them, muttered Kakashi snapping his book shut creating a shadow clone to leave there in case they showed up while he was away. The silver-haired Jonin then walked down the stairs like a normal before making his way to the classroom where upon opening the door he found the classroom empty. Strange, where could they be? Questioned Kakashi scratching his head, he then walked out of the academy building. Hashtag about two hours later, Ichiraku ramen hash the genin were sitting at the ramen bar quietly talking waiting for their sensei to show up. Here you three are, muttered the man as he walked thought the flaps of the ramen stand. Why didn't you three come up to the roof like I asked you? Questioned Kakashi. Payback declared Naruto not even turning to face the man. Well, all right I deserved that given we're all here we might as well get to know each other so why don't we talk about ourselves? Said Kakashi taking a seat next to his genin. LLL like WWW what sensei? Questioned Hanada. Names, likes, dislikes, hobbies, dreams that kind of thing, said Kakashi. All right I'm Naruto Uzumaki I like ice, snow, my sword Samahata, arctic animals, ramen and learning new things, I don't like arrogant people people who waste my time, traitors, and rapists, my hobbies, well I don't have too many of those but I guess training would be a hobby, and my dream I'm not really sure I just want to help people in need, said Naruto. Good Naruto good, said Kakashi before pointing to Kiba. Alright I'm Kiba Inazuka and this is Akamaru points to Akamaru I like dogs, meat, my family, my friends and walking, I don't like cats, loud noises, bad smells and those who insult my family, my hobbies well there's training walking Akamaru and hanging out with my friends and my dream I want to be the greatest clan head my clan has had, declared Kiba with a grin. Kakashi gave a nod before turning to Hanada. MMMM my name is HH Hanada Hayuga, I like cinnamon R rolls, Zenzai, my SSS sister and my FFF friends I don't like B bullies, SSS seafood and the way the MM main family of my CCC clan treats the BBB branch family. My hobby is FFF flower pressing and my DDDD dream is to remove the cage BB bird seal and unite the BBB branches of MMM my clan, said Hanada. Good good Hanada although we are going to have to work on that stuttering, said Kakashi. Alright I guess I should give you lot a little insight into me. My name is Kakashi Hataki, my likes him I have a few, my dislikes there's a couple of those as well, my hobbies you a lot are too young and innocent for that and my dream is something again you lot are a little too young for, said Kakashi with an eye smile. Should have expected as much, muttered Naruto rolling his eyes at his sensei. Alright you lot tomorrow you three are to meet me at training ground 7 at 7 for a little survival exercise, said Kakashi. Are you going to show up or are we not going to start this exercise until sundown tomorrow because you came late and we left? asked Naruto. Fine spoil sport make it 10, said Kakashi. 
and you'll want to have all of your gear as this won't be just any survival exercise, said Kakashi. WWW what kind of exercise is it sensei? questioned Hanada. You don't want to know trust me just show up with your equipment and be ready for a fight as this exercise has a 66% failure rate and if you fail you go back to the academy, said Kakashi. What but we passed the exam, exclaimed Kiba loudly. Did you honestly think that knowing some history, how to aim, how to throw a punch and three jutsu was all you needed to become a ninja? No that is a test to weed out the ones with absolutely no hope of becoming ninja this will be your true exam, said Kakashi with an evil glint in his eye getting up and walking to the exit. Oh and I wouldn't eat breakfast if I was you you'll just hurl, declared Kakashi as he stepped out of the stand. Well I've got to go I'm just going to say if you want to pass this test tomorrow ignore the advice of Kakashi sensei and eat, said Naruto before he too left the stand, he had places to be one of which was the Hokage Tower. Hashtag 5 minutes later Hokage Tower hash Naruto walked into Hiruzen's office having seen the door open and ignored the secretary's calls for him to stop. Ah Naruto kun I wondered when I'd see you again, said Hiruzen his pipe hanging from his mouth as he blew out a breath of smoke. I would like my mother's scrolls on Fuenjutsu, said Naruto very seriously, Hiruzen sat there in deep thought for a moment, and there was no real reason to deny him at least that much. All right, said Hiruzen standing up and walking over to the pictures of the previous cage before pulling Minato's off the wall revealing a safe. All of your parents' belongings were sealed up after their deaths to prevent them being stolen you'll be given your father's belongings and the deed to your parents' house when you reach Chunin, declared Hiruzen. Naruto nodded as Hiruzen opened safe revealing two scrolls, the cage pulled out one of the scrolls and handed it to Naruto, who took the scroll with a smile and turned to leave when the door flew open. Prepare to die old man today I'm going to take that hat, declared a boy as he ran into the room only to trip over his obscenely long scarf falling flat on his face in the process, the boy pushed himself to his knees rubbing his face before looking around the room. You, you tripped me didn't you, declared the boy pointing an accusing finger at Naruto. You tripped over your scarf idiot, said Naruto. No it was you you big idiot, said the boy, only for Naruto to yank him into the air by the collar. You tripped on your bloody scarf you little twit, growled Naruto, once more the door was ripped open. Put him down you miscreant that is the honorable grandson of the Sandame, said the man to Naruto, the boy just smirked figuring he was off the hook now. Whoop ti ing do, said Naruto sarcastically looking back at the Jonin before turning back to the kid. Accuse me of bullshit again and I'll freeze your legs, said Naruto dropping the kid unceremoniously on his ass before walking out of the room. Hashtag about an hour later hash Naruto was now sitting atop the Hokage monument on his father's head, he had come straight there from the Hokage tower unfortunately at some stage during the trip he'd gained a follower, Naruto sighed and once more looked over his shoulder towards the box with a pair of eyes poking out of it looking at him. Does he honestly think I can't tell that's him? thought Naruto. Just scare him off it's getting a little bit creepy now he's just been watching you, declared Akane from inside Naruto's mind, and he was half tempted to listen to her and scare the kid off, but all of the ways he could think of either ended up with the kid scarred for life or wounded and that was something he didn't need. Naruto sighed and rolled up his scroll, he really hadn't wanted to spend the rest of the day in the compound but there was nothing else Naruto could do so he stood up and walked to the edge of the stone face of his father, before casually stepping off and falling down. While falling Naruto shunshined to his and Jiraiya's house, landing outside before jumping up into one of the trees where he pulled out his scroll and once more began to read. Why you here Gaki I'd have thought you'd still be out with your teammates, said Jiraiya. No we finished after introductions, I went and got Ka-chan's stuff from Gigi and then have spent the last couple of hours trying to ignore Gigi's grandson who was just short of stalking me, said Naruto nonchalantly. Well, Good for you, declared Jiraiya awkwardly before walking back inside he had lady friends to entertain. Hashtag next morning, training ground 7, 10 am hash Naruto walked up to the training grounds he was itching to do something but again he was being followed by a box with eyes. Alright kid knock it off now, said Naruto without turning around. Damn you must have some pretty impressive skills to be able to see through my disguise, said the kid as he stood up out of the box. Teach me, ordered the boy. No I'm not your sensei, not your mentor, not even your friend leave me alone, declared Naruto leveling a chilling glare, the boy jumped up but stood his ground. This has to be a test to see whether I'm worthy of being his apprentice, thought the boy as he stood his ground. 
Naruto just turned around and left, with the kid now following him. As Naruto walked up to the training ground he saw both Hanada and Kiba there already. Morning you too, said Naruto walking up. M morning nn Naruto-kun, said Hanada. Morning Naruto, who's the brat? Questioned Kiba. I'm Konohamaru and Naruto's going to be my sensei, said the boy with a grin. No I'm not brat leave me alone, yelled Naruto glaring at the boy his eyes glowing silver as he glared at the boy. Konohamaru decided that at this point it was a good point to leave. After half an hour of waiting Kakashi appeared before the three genin in a swirl of leaves. You're late, growled Naruto Samahada's scales scratching against each other indicating the sword wasn't happy either. I got lost on the road of life, declared Kakashi getting a glare from Naruto, whose left hand was engulfed in an icy mist. Alright it's good to see you're all so eager I'll just quickly explain the test and then we can begin, declared Kakashi as he pulled out a pair of bells and held them up. Your objective is to get these bells from me within the next few hours you have until 1 o'clock to get a bell from me you may use any means you deem necessary those without a bell go without lunch, declared Kakashi expecting to hear growling stomachs but to his surprise nothing. Never hurled from training and I've trained with training monsters, declared Naruto still glaring at Kakashi. Anyway the ones who don't have a bell once time is up are sent back to the academy, declared Kakashi hoping to scare the genin a bit he got the reaction he wanted from Kiba and Hanada but Naruto rolled his eyes. B but s sensei there are only tt2 bells, said stuttered Hanada, to this Kakashi nodded. Yes only a maximum of two of you can pass this test, declared Kakashi with a sadistic grin. And with that bit of information I believe we'll start, said Kakashi and with that Kiba and Hanada ran off into the forest. Uh Naruto I said start, said Kakashi thinking Naruto hadn't heard him. Oh I heard you quite well Kakashi but you've wasted my time so I'm a little pissed right now, declared Naruto. Before Kakashi could even get another word in Naruto ran his thumb along his sharpened canine before he quickly flipped through hand signs. Kachiyose no jutsu, summoning jutsu, yelled Naruto slamming his hand on the ground creating a plume of smoke from where his hand landed and as the smoke cleared a white fox sat there looking around. Naruto sama, said the fox meeting Naruto's gaze. Raiko, said Naruto looking down at the fox. What have I been summoned for Naruto sama? asked the white fox. Naruto simply pointed at Kakashi who was watching on with a smile on his face under his mask. I would like to wipe the smug grin off his face, declared Naruto. Well, it has been a while since we hunted together, not since that snake's pawns, said the fox. Hayaten Kori Suraisa no Jutsu. Ice release ice slicer jutsu, called Naruto as the water in the air around him froze into several discs that in an instant flew at Kakashi, who for his credit schooled his features quickly before jumping to the side to avoid all of the discs however as he landed Raiko was on the janin in a flash of fur and teeth, Kakashi barely had time to get a kanai out before the fox's teeth were upon him. Naruto meanwhile had finished a short chain of hand signs. Kori Bunshin no jutsu, ice clone jutsu said Naruto quietly as a clone formed and ran off into the trees. Are you sure you're right Naru-kun? questioned Akane from inside Naruto's head. Sure. No reasonably certain. Yes, replied Naruto as he pulled Samahata into one hand while the other was covered by the icy mist as he charged forwards at Kakashi who was still holding off the quick kitsune. Naruto jumped up and over the fox and flipped over bringing his sword down on Kakashi who just in the nick of time kicked the fox in the gut pushing him back enough to bring his kanai up to block Samahata. Naruto brought his icy hand forwards in a claw-like strike to Kakashi's side as the blonde landed on the ground only for Kakashi to be replaced instantly with a log which froze where his hand hit it. Behind you, said Akane giving Naruto time to roll to the right to avoid Kakashi who was in a crouched position with a tiger hand sign. You escaped my Senen Garashi, thousand years of death. This time Naruto, said Kakashi in an overly dramatic fashion. Naruto rolled his eye as he swung Samahata over himself at Kakashi who jumped out of the way of the blade as it hit the ground. Naruto flipped to his feet only to once more not see Kakashi. Bello, called Akane making Naruto jump just as a pair of hands burst out of the ground to grab where his ankles were just a second ago. Screw this, said Naruto as he landed on the ground and ran off towards the forest making a hand sign as he went. Kirigakir no jutsu, hidden mist jutsu, called Naruto as a cloud of mist formed around the clearing as Naruto jumped into it and disappeared from Kakashi's sight. 
He has more skill than he's letting on, thought Kakashi as he looked into the mist around him before pulling out an orange covered book and began to read. Oh Suki you naughty naughty girl, giggled Kakashi perversely as he read. Hashtag in the forest hash Naruto's ice clone had gone into the forest and quickly found Kiba and Hanada who were both watching the fight in awe after finding both of them the ice clone sent them to another clearing to discuss their plan. What's the deal Naruto? Questioned Kiba as he saw the original Naruto walk into the clearing. Let me ask you both something have either of you heard about a team from Konoha with only three people on it? Questioned Naruto as he walked up to the pair. And no, stuttered Hanada, while getting a simple head shake from Kiba. Next question have you ever heard of a fresh out of the academy beating a Jonin in a fight? Questioned Naruto, getting a head shake from both of his teammates. Exactly there's something fishy about this test why would the academy put us in teams of three only then to knock one of those members out after a day? Questioned Naruto. T the TTT test isn't A about T the bells? Questioned Hanada. I think so, said Naruto nodding. I think this test is actually about teamwork the number of bells is to distract us from the real objective of getting the bells, said Naruto. So you're saying we should work together to get the bells? Questioned Kiba getting a nod from Naruto. I agree, said Hanada. Kiba nodded and Akamaru who poked his head out of Kiba's jumper barked in agreement. So what's the plan Naruto? Asked Kiba looking at their temporary leader, Naruto's smirk told the Inazuka heir whatever he had was good. Hashtag back with Kakashi an hour later hash. Where are they, they haven't done anything since Naruto escaped unless, though Kakashi only to be interrupted as Raiko ran at him from the tree line and once more went to bite him in the leg. Kakashi sighed and pulled out a kanai to deflect the fox's teeth. Gatsuga. Fang passing Fang, called a voice from inside the mist that had yet to recede since Naruto left it. And then out of nowhere two twisters joined the fox in charging at Kakashi. Who quickly put his book away for a second kanai ready to deflect both twisters and the fox coming at him. However before even that a trio of arrows sailed out of nowhere at Kakashi who quickly deflected the projectiles as they got close only then to have to jump back as the two twisters came at him from his left and right. Kakashi's danger sense was telling him to move but just as he went to he felt a sharp pain in his left arm. He turned to see Hanada there with chakra coated fingertips. Kakashi quickly substituted with a nearby log as the twisters once more changed their course towards him. Only to once more have to block the teeth of a fox as Raiko came running up to him bearing his teeth. Then once more arrows came flying at him however these ones appeared to be made of ice. Then once more he had to jump back as the twisters of Kiba and Akamaru came flying at him and once more missed Kakashi then spun around with both kanai to block a strike from Naruto's Samahata. Once the strike was blocked Naruto jumped back and faded into the mist, and before Kakashi could even move he felt a sharp pain in his leg. When he looked down he saw Hanada sliding past him having hit his legs with her juken, gentle fist, and before Kakashi could counter attack her once more Raiko was upon him in a flurry of teeth and fur Kakashi blocked the teeth with his kanai however just before he could kick the fox away he was forced to jump back. Hayaten Harayu no Jutsu, Ice Style Ice Dragon Jutsu, called Naruto freezing the water in the air into the shape of a dragon that flew forwards at Kakashi making the man jump back from the fox to dodge the ice dragon before both twisters once more came at Kakashi from his left and right while Raiko and Naruto charged from his front. The silver-haired Jonin took a quick glance behind him and unsurprisingly he saw Hanada charging forwards with chakra coating her hand. Kakashi Kawarimi ed with a nearby log however in the next instant he was surprised when he was once more surrounded by his genin who charged forwards from clouds of smoke. Kakashi jumped up and delivered a split kick knocking the two twisters away from him and brought his kanai up to block the powerful downward strike from Naruto with Samahata while bringing up his kanai to block the fox next to Naruto and as he landed Kakashi launched his foot backwards to hit Hanada in the chest knocking her backwards before shooting his foot forwards hitting Naruto in the chest. Naruto flipped backwards away from Kakashi who was about to follow when an arrow made once more of ice came flying at him Kakashi brought up his kanai to block the projectile. However too late did he realize that there was an explosive tag wrapped around the shaft of the arrow, and just after the silver haired Jonin deflected the arrow the tag went off creating a reasonably large explosion knocking Kakashi backwards into a tree and before the Jonin could recover Naruto snatched the bells from his hip and then jumped back to between his teammates. Excellent work you three but who will get the other bell Naruto? 
asked Kakashi as he stood up leaning his back on the tree looking at the genin. They can both have the bells, said Naruto tossing one bell to each of his teammate who then quickly threw the bells to the ground. No without you we never would have got them, said Kiba as his bell hit the ground. Why why yes ee -e either w we all p pass or none of us d do, stuttered Hanada as her bell hit the ground. Is that your final answer? questioned Kakashi getting a nod from all three genin. Well congratulations you three pass, said Kakashi with an eye smile. I told you too it was about the teamwork, said Naruto with a grin, as the two let out the breath they didn't even realize they were holding before rolling their eyes at the bragging Naruto. Congratulations you three it's official we're team 7, declared Kakashi. It had been about month since team 7 had formed and throughout the month the three genin had been introduced to the wonder of D-rank missions and as a team had completed around 50 of the damn things. Now standing in the Hokage's office with Hanada holding Tora the cat belonging to Madame Shijimi the wife of the fire daimyo, the cat was the bane of Team 7's D-rank experience at least half of the D-ranks were catching the damn cat and the cat would always scratch Naruto, Kiba and Akamaru, hence why Hanada was holding the cat otherwise her teammates might feel the need to slit the cat's throat. Tora-chan, squealed Madame Shijimi as she entered the room and took her cat from Hanada and squeezed the poor animal tightly. Ha serves your right cat, was the shared thought of Naruto, Kiba and Akamaru as the cat screamed from being squeezed to tight. Well done team 7 well we have several D ranks available, a member of the council needs his garden weeded, a nobleman needs his son watched, Tora, capturing Tora, said Hiruzen interrupted by a scream from Madame Shijimi. No, growled Naruto interrupting Hiruzen, no? questioned the aged cage. No more chores were ninja not teenagers desperate for money, declared Naruto getting a nod from Kiba and Hanada. Well Kakashi what do you think are they ready for AC rank? Questioned Hiruzen looking at Kakashi. Hokage-sama you can't be serious these three have been genin for less than a month, said Iruka only to stop as he felt the temperature of the room drop. Iruka shut up I have been trained for a combined total of three and a half years by S rank ninja and these two have spent their whole lives being trained by at least a rank shinobi and we have spent the month training under an A rank nin who we almost beat the first time we spared you know nothing of us or our progress and Hokage sama asked Kakashi sensei not you, growled Naruto glaring at the chunin instructor who recoiled slightly at the disrespect and was about to reprimand the genin. He's right Aruka these three are now soldiers of the village not little academy students you need to coddle and in answer to your question Hokage-sama these three have been ready for a month now, said Kakashi. Right well I have a C rank mission that I can send you four on, said Hiruzen pulling out a scroll tossing it to Kakashi who unrolled the scroll and quickly read through the contents of the scroll. Alright you three were headed to Taki so meet at the north gate in half an hour and pack for a week, said Kakashi, all three of the genin nodded and left the room. Here you go Kakashi, said Hiruzen handing Kakashi another scroll which Kakashi pocketed, before nodding to his leader before vanishing in a swirl of leaves. Are you sure about this Hokage-sama? questioned Aruka looking to the elderly cage. Yes, said Hiruzen simply. Hashtag half an hour later at the north gates hash. Naruto walked up to see Kiba and Hanada already at the gates both with backpacks on. Where's your stuff Naruto surely you have to have at least a change of clothes, questioned Kiba looking at Naruto. Naruto pulled the neckline of his shirt to the left revealing part of his tattooed chest a tattoo of an arrow crossed a scroll tattooed just below the neck. Most of the tattoos on my skin are not purely decorative most of them cover seals I have tattooed onto my skin this one holds any and all of my supplies, said Naruto before letting go of his shirt letting it fall back in place. What K kind of S seals do you have T tattooed on you? asked Hanada who over the month with Kiba. Kakashi and Naruto she had gradually been getting better with her stuttering to the point it was almost gone now. I mostly have storage seals for various things, I have a summoning tattoo here, said Naruto motioning to his right arm with a white furred kitsune on it going down to an open mouth on his wrist. Uh let's see gravity seals and weight seals but they're mostly covered by my tats, said Naruto truth be told he had a lot more seals tattooed to his skin he just was nervous to reveal all of the seals to his teammates as revealing what some of the seals he had did would bring up questions that he didn't really want to answer. Luckily for Naruto Kakashi chose this moment to appear. Alright guys we're headed to Taki which even going the max speed you guys can go is still about a day and a half but there's no rush so let's take a leisurely pace and we'll be there in two days, said Kakashi getting a nod from the three genin. 
All right guys delta formation, said Kakashi. The three genin took a triangle formation with Kakashi standing between Hanada and Kiba with Naruto at the front before heading out. Hashtag hours later, just as the sun was going down. Hash. All right guys we can stop here for the night, said Kakashi as he stopped tree hopping the three young ninja nodded. You guys set up your tents I'll collect some wood, said Kakashi. I don't need to set up a tent Kakashi sensei I sleep in the open but I do kinda need to go hunting, said Naruto. Well if you can bring back enough for everyone, said Kakashi with an eye smile. Sure but I make no promises I have no idea what's around here, said Naruto before he then walked into the woods before pulling his bow off his back and formed an arrow of ice that he notched and held at the ready and walked far enough into the forest that a small pulse of biju chakra would go unnoticed by Kakashi and Naruto's two teammates. Akane, said Naruto mentally. On it, replied the woman before discreetly sending out a tiny pulse of her yukai even if she was sending out the smallest amount possible it was still enough to get all of the information within a kilometer. Alright you have lots of small birds in the area and even some small creatures but there's three boars 200 meters west, a doe half a click north and two bucks fighting 270 meters to the northeast, declared Akane. Naruto thought about it for a moment before heading towards the two bucks forming another arrow of ice which joined the first ready to be shot at the fighting bucks. Naruto as he ran towards his targets quickly took to the trees and hopped silently towards the area he was told the bucks were. Within moments Naruto reached the edge of a clearing that the bucks were fighting within and looking at the creatures he formed two more ice arrows and gently notched them before quietly pulling back the bowstring and taking aim at the two animals hoping to hit each with a pair of arrows. Naruto took a deep breath and steadied his breathing and let the string go launching the arrows forwards and before the buck could even stop their fighting the two animals fell to the side as the blood drained out of them. Naruto dropped from the tree and walked forwards channeling chakra to his left hand as he did a knife appeared in a plume of smoke, Naruto knelt down beside the two downed animals that were good and dead and set about cleaning his kills doing it here rather than in front of Kiba and Hanada. Hashtag about an hour later hash Naruto walked back into the campsite to see his teammates and sensei sitting around a crackling fire. Did you not get anything? Questioned Kakashi being first to see Naruto. No I just thought it would be better to clean the carcass and harvest what was usable away from these two, said Naruto motioning to his two teammates. Ah makes sense so what did you actually get? Questioned Kakashi. I killed a pair of bucks and a pair of boars, said Naruto unsealing half of the harvested material from said animals which did include all of the pelts which the meat was lying on. Take as much as you want I'll share this lot but the other half is mine, said Naruto, the other three nodded it was understandable he did kill and clean all four of the kills and the meat from one buck and one boar was more than enough for all of them and with that the four of them began to cook up the meat over the fire. After everyone had eaten their fill of the meat Naruto provided and their own food they sat by the fire quietly. Alright we have to organize watch shifts, declared Kakashi. I'll keep watch, said Naruto leaning back stretching his arms above his head. Alright Naruto can take first watch, said Kakashi only to be interrupted. I meant all night, said Naruto. Kakashi turned to Naruto with a raised eyebrow. I've spent almost a month in a constant state of awake before two days in a row is nothing, said Naruto, Kakashi shrugged. If you okay with that then sure, said Kakashi. Naruto nodded before pulling Samahata off his back as he jumped up into the nearby trees. Hashtag the next morning hash as the sun rose on the horizon so did Konoha's team 7 or at least Kakashi, Hanada and Kiba. Naruto was still very much awake from his watch shift. As the sun rose the three Konoha nin packed away their tent while Naruto cooked a fish for each of them for breakfast the fish caught from a nearby river. After eating the four ninja set out towards their destination Taki. Hashtag several hours later hash after running for hours the four ninja arrived outside the village of Taki as they walked towards the village they were greeted by two people one was a man he had long brown hair and dark eyes. The second figure was a girl who looked to be younger than the genin by a year or two and was half hiding behind the man she had mint green hair and orange eyes. T that girl she got Chomei sealed in her, said Akane from inside Naruto's head as the Konoha team walked up to the two figures. You sure? Questioned Naruto shocked to see another container. Absolutely, declared Akane. Hello there I'm Kakashi and you must be Shibuki, declared Kakashi stepping up to the man who nodded to the silver haired Jonin. So you are the team the Hokage sent with his reply, said the man getting a nod from Kakashi who pulled out the scroll from his pocket and handed it to the man who opened it and began to read, Naruto took the opportunity to walk up to the girl. 
Hello there Imoto chan you don't mind if I call you that right Nana chan, said Naruto. The girl looked at Naruto terrified only then to calm down a bit when she saw his genuine smile at her. And not at T all Q ni san, stuttered the girl as she stepped out from behind Shibuki who was now looking wide eyed at the boy while Kakashi was staring wide eyed at the girl who stepped forward into Naruto's waiting arms and the two shared a hug and the girl began to sob. Shish, shish it's all right Imoto said Naruto soothingly as he ran his hands down her back in a calming fashion. I knew I made the right choice in transferring her to Konoha, muttered Shibuki but both Naruto and the girl heard the man. Why you transferred me to Konoha? questioned the girl slightly scared and at the same time looking at him with hope. Yes and this is the reply from the Hokage accepting the transfer, said Shibuki with a smile down at his surrogate sister, who smiled and ran over to hug him. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, declared the girl hugging Shibuki. Just promise me one thing Fu Chan, said Shibuki making Fu look at him. Live happily, he said and Fu nodded vigorously. Before anything else could happen a tacky ninja come running up to Shibuki. Shibuki-sama, Shibuki-sama the village is under attack, said the ninja. Shibuki-sama, Shibuki-sama the village is under attack, said the ninja. What? questioned Shibuki looking at his ninja. Sir Itsuin and he has the help of three aim missing nin he's saying he'll kill as many villagers as it takes for you to bring him the hero water, said the ninja. Damn it, growled Shibuki glaring at the ground. Let me help Shibuki, said Fu. No we can't have you fight Fu the villagers will just as likely attack you as the enemy, said Shibuki. Then let us help we can't leave our allies out to dry while we're here, said Naruto stepping forwards getting a nod from Kiba and Hanada. Kakashi? questioned Shibuki looking at the Konoha's team leader. Up to you Shibuki-sama, said Kakashi, Shibuki then nodded to the Konoha team. All right you can help but you four have to keep Fu safe too all right, said Shibuki, getting a nod from the Konoha nin. Naruto pulled Samahata off his back as the six people set off into the village. Once they made it into the village it became apparent how bad Fu's treatment was within the village as even during an attack on their village the people were glaring at the mint-haired girl. As they ran, Naruto put his open hand on the girl's shoulder. It's okay, Imoto, this time tomorrow we'll be so far away from here that this will all seem like an ancient memory, said Naruto with a small smile. Thanks, Ni san, said Fu with a gentle smile, only to then dodge a rock thrown at her. Get out of here, you damn demon, you're not welcome here, growled the person who threw the rock. Kakashi was forced to smack away another rock that came flying towards Fu. This isn't going to work Fu I'm going to make a cage bunshin to take you out of here and guard you until we get back okay? Questioned Kakashi getting a hesitant nod from the girl. Cage bunshin no jutsu, shadow clone jutsu, called Kakashi creating a second one of himself. Kori bunshin no jutsu, ice clone jutsu, called Naruto the ice next to him forming another one of him that followed Kakashi's clones led and followed with Fu. She seemed a little scared I thought it would be for the best, said Naruto as Kakashi looked at him before getting a nod. All right you four I need to go and get something, said Shibuki diverting from the path the ninja were following. The Konoha nin continued running down the street towards the commotion at the center of the village. Shibuki I'm getting impatient bring me the hero water or I will start killing these people, yelled a man with spiky brown hair standing in front of a group of people tied up. Naruto growled as he saw the man with three others all three from aim one was a brown haired woman wearing a semi revealing outfit, the other two were men one had silver hair and a blue mark running across his nose while the other had brown hair covered mostly by his bandana headband with a mask covering the lower half of his face. Naruto put down Samahada and pulled his bow off his back and quickly froze the water in the air into four arrows all of which were notched into his bow which he brought up and aimed down the shaft and all four arrows were aimed at each of the four people. Naruto took a deep breath and steadied himself and then let the arrows go. For a moment all was silent as the arrows flew the several hundred feet towards the ninja, but as they looked like they were going to kill the targets the arrows were either deflected or shattered. Oh ho 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 what do we have here, said the spiky haired man looking up towards Naruto and the Konoha nin who all ducked when they saw the arrows deflected. You three go and check it out, ordered the spiky haired man to his three companions who all nodded and jumped towards the roof. Scatter you three meet back here in 20 minutes only engage if you have no other option, said Kakashi to his team who nodded and all three of them and then Kakashi himself took off in four different directions. 
The three former AIM Nin arrived atop the building not a moment later before they saw three of the Nin and gave chase. Hashtag with Hanada hash Hanada ran down the streets of Taki thinking of a way to lose anyone who might be on her tail just as she rounded a corner she came face to face, with her opponent the man was one of the three ninja he had brown hair covered mostly by his bandana headband and his lower face was covered by a Kakashi-esque mask. Well 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 what do we have here a Hyuga, an unmarked Hyuga at that I wonder what Kumo would pay for you, declared the man making Hanada shiver. Why you'll have to see capture me first, declared Hanada dropping into her clan's fighting style. Hashtag with Kiba hash Kiba and Akamaru were roof hopping trying to avoid the three ninja sent after them. He however could smell one of the men after him he knew from the fact that the man's scent was getting stronger he couldn't outrun the man and as much as he hated to admit it he really didn't have the brains to outsmart a wet paper bag so, trying what he half hoped would work but half hoped didn't so he could beat the guy up, Kiba dropped from the roof into an alleyway and quickly hid behind a dumpster. Kiba then heard someone else drop into the alleyway. Get out here kid I know you're there, said a gruff voice. Kiba poked his head around the corner of the dumpster to see the man looking straight at him. Kiba pulled his head back around and groaned the groan masking him pulling two soldier pills from his pocket and eating one himself and tossing one to Akamaru as he stood out from behind the dumpster. I got you now kid, smirked the man. Hashtag with Kakashi hash. Kakashi was being followed and he knew it but he was just giving his pursuer the run around not caring to attack but apparently his skills had lulled a bit since retiring from Anbu because this woman was vaguely keeping up with him and if he was being honest with himself it was bugging him. Hashtag back with Naruto hash Naruto crouched on a roof not too far from their original position but far enough that it wasn't a risk. Naruto however watched in horror as Shibuki was impaled on a sword made of what appeared to be water. As Shibuki fell to the ground a bottle fell out of the man's shirt, but Naruto barely noticed it as he vaulted over the edge of the roof falling to the ground using his chakra to cushion his fall before once more pulling Samahata from his back and charging at the spiky haired man that just attacked Shibuki who was now downing the water from the bottle that fell from Shibuki, when Naruto got close to the man he exploded with chakra sending Naruto back. As Naruto flew through the air he let go of Samahata. I feel so powerful, said the spiky haired man with a sadistic grin. Oh so the big man has more chakra big deal more for Samahata to snack on, growled Naruto as he pushed himself to his knees then to his feet. The blonde ninja then began to run towards the man attacking Taki who just stood there with a sadistic smirk on his face. As Naruto passed Samahata his right hand reached out and snatched it while his left hand became encompassed by a cold mist. The blonde ran forwards and just before he got to the spiky haired man he spun around sending himself careening into the man Samahata first. The giant sharkskin like blade slammed into the guy's stomach cutting it up like nothing else while simultaneously sucking out the man's chakra at an alarming rate, just as Naruto's blade began to pull away he spun around more and his frosted hand flew around and slammed into the man's side making the immediate area freeze from Naruto's hand it was at that point that the man melted into a puddle of water. Water clone damn it thought Naruto as he looked around for the real one. Naru kun behind you, came the voice of Akane Naruto spun around to meet the man's water sword with his own blade that then quickly ate the chakra from the water weapon leaving the spiky haired man falling towards Naruto who punched the man in the face sending him back about 20 meters. That hurt you little shit, growled the man. Hayaten Shimo Baresu, ice style frost breath called Naruto spitting out a cloud of icy mist that flew towards the spiky haired man who quickly jumped out of the way of the cloud. Kirigakir no jutsu, hidden mist jutsu, called Naruto bringing in a cloud of mist around the two. Well aren't you full of surprises, said the man as he stood still trying to locate Naruto. Out of nowhere three arrows of ice came flying at the back of the man who turned and destroyed them with a kanai in hand. Sweden Suikadon no jutsu, water style water shark bomb jutsu called Naruto from inside the mist as a shark made entirely of water came flying out of the mist once more at the spiky haired man who jumped to the side avoiding the attack. Sweden Sweden no jutsu, water style water bullet jutsu, called Naruto spitting out a wave of water towards the spiky haired man who was hit in the gut by the technique and shot back 20 meters, but got up and shook off making Naruto's attack look like nothing. Fine then try this on for size, Hyaten Hyoga Ryu no jutsu, Ice style glacial dragon, 
called Naruto creating a giant dragon out of ice that flew towards the spiky-haired man who jumped up over the head of the dragon only to be hit in the chest with Samahata which sucked out chakra from the hit and as the man fell towards the ground Naruto's free hand lashed out in a claw-like strike with an icy mist-coated hand that hit the spiky-haired ninja in the knee freezing the joint solid. Kami damn it, yelled the man as he landed on the ground. Kami damn you indeed, said Naruto spinning back around and slamming Samahata into the frozen part of the limb once more sucking out chakra while also shearing the man's lower half of his leg off, before he could scream Naruto ran his weapon across the man's neck ripping his throat out spraying blood all over the place in the process. Naruto flicked the blood off his weapon before putting it back on his back. Naruto then walked over to the downed Shibuki and pressed his fingers to the man's neck not believing that he would find a pulse but his eyes shot open when he felt a weak pulse from the man. Samahada take my chakra I need enough to be able to control precisely, said Naruto the sword on his back began sucking out his chakra leaving Naruto with no more than about an eighth of his original reserves. Naruto began to sweat, as his chakra vanished from his system when he felt the right amount he flipped through a short chain of hand signs before his hands glowed green and he put his hands to Shibuki's chest over the open wound in his chest. It was at this point that Kakashi, Hanada and Kiba showed up all looking a little worse for wear, all three saw that the spiky-haired man was dead and from the looks of it Shibuki was too but Kakashi looked at Naruto with shock clear on his face. Naruto you know medical ninjutsu? Questioned Kakashi getting a nod from Naruto who was concentrating on the man in front of him. Just as the last part of Shibuki's wound closed up and he shot up taking a deep breath, Naruto fell to the side unconscious as chakra exhaustion hit him like a truck, just before he hit the ground a blur came out of nowhere to catch him before his head hit the ground. You did good knee san thank you, said Fu after catching her brother. Thank you. You for you kindness won't be forgotten anytime soon said Shibuki as he stood outside his village seeing the four Konoha ninja and Fu off. Of course Shibuki-sama were allies we couldn't just leave while you were in trouble, said Kakashi. Shibuki nodded then turning to Fu. Remember your promise Fu, said Shibuki getting a vigorous nod from the girl who was standing next to Naruto. And you Naruto better look after her or I will hunt you down, said Shibuki glaring at Naruto who glared back. I would sooner run myself through with the dullest and rustiest blade under the sun, declared Naruto. Good, said Shibuki. All right you two break it up we should probably head off right Kakashi-san? Questioned Fu looking towards Kakashi, who nodded to the girl. She's right break it up you two, said Kakashi pushing the two glaring men apart, Naruto then nodded to Shibuki who nodded back, before the blonde then turned and began walking away. Fu quickly smiled to Shibuki before running after Naruto who waited a moment for her. With that the rest of Team 7 nodded to the leader of Taki before following Naruto and Fu. Hashtag several hours later hash the five ninja had been walking for a few hours Fu and Naruto bonding while the others just watched on but eventually the inevitable question was asked. So Naruto since when did you have a sister and why was she in a different country? Asked Kiba not entirely sure of the situation. We're not actually blood related, said Fu not really wanting to go into much more detail. Then how are you two siblings? Questioned Kiba pressing for the information. She and I share a burden that links us together along with several others around the world and that's all you need to know Kiba, said Naruto not at all ready to reveal his tenant to his team nor wanting to reveal Fu's at all. Luckily for the two Jinchuriki at that moment a messenger hawk swooped down to land on Kakashi's outstretched arm. The silver-haired Jonin took the scroll attached to the hawk's leg and began reading over it, his eyes widened at what he read. Alright you four Hokage-sama has another mission for us, Asuma's team was sent on a mission and are requesting back up so we are head towards the land of waves to meet them and back them up should any trouble arise but from here on out you four will need to listen to exactly what I say when I say it got it. Questioned Kakashi getting a nod from the now nervous Jenin, excluding Naruto, who reached down and squeezed Fu's hand reassuredly. She looked at him nervousness etched onto her face. I won't let anything happen to you I promise, declared the blonde shinobi making Fu nod at him smiling gratefully at his comment. Thanks Ni-san, said Fu. With that the five ninja changed their direction and ran towards the land of waves. Hashtag the next day midday hash team 7 plus Fu had been running for several hours now at high speeds to try and make it to where they were needed to back up team 10. The five of them ran out of the tree line where they came to a coast where four ninja two civilians and one boat were situated. Kakashi. Questioned one of the four ninja. 
Asuma Hokage-sama sent us as backup, said Kakashi as he and his team walked up to Asuma and his team. Please as if any of you could help us, snorted Sasuke. What the hell is your problem? Growled Fu glaring at the Uchiha. Imoto ignore him he's just an arrogant with a stick up his ass sideways, said Naruto putting a hand on the girl's shoulder, as everyone around them snickered at Naruto's comment. As fun as this conversation is my boat won't be able to hold all of you maybe four of you plus Tazuna and myself, said the rower before Sasuke could retort to Naruto's comment. That's okay me and my team will follow along behind, said Kakashi before turning to his team. You guys remember the water walking exercise right? Questioned Kakashi getting a nod from Kiba, Hanada and Naruto and a confused look from Fu. It's okay Fu I'll carry you across and I'll teach you water walking at some point, said Naruto putting his hand on Fu's shoulder. Well if that's the case let's go, said Tazuna getting a nod from the ninja minus Sasuke who was brooding. Naruto knelt down in front of Fu who jumped on his back piggyback style, while Asuma's team got won the boat before it pulled out into the open waters and as they said Kakashi and his team followed behind the boat on foot atop the water. You ninja will never cease to amaze me, said Tazuna looking back at Kakashi and his team. The ninja despite either sitting in a boat or walking across the water were all still vigilant looking out for threats, however after about half an hour of walking the mist parted to reveal a huge structure. Wow said Fu in awe of the bridge, everyone else wasn't doing much better, excluding Asuma, Kakashi and Naruto. Another ten minutes passed with no change but then the boatman shut off the engine and started to paddle his boat into shore. Why did you stop the motor? questioned Choji munching on his chips looking back at the now rowing man. This is a close to shore as we can get with the motor as Gado has many people on the lookout for anything so keep it down, whispered the boatman. Naruto grit his teeth as he glared down before he began to stride forwards with more purpose and within several more minutes the boat and Team 7 landed at the shore of the Lands of Waves, Naruto let Fu down as everyone got off the boat. This is as far as I can take you I hope you finish your bridge to Zuna but this is all I can do, said the boatman. You have already done more than enough old friend, said Tazuna as he waked towards the forest followed by the nine ninja as the rower paddled back out before then vanishing into the mist like a phantom into the darkness. The nine ninja walked along behind Tazuna keeping a vigilant watch around for trouble. Hanada with her Byakugan active, Kiba sniffing the air around them. Naruto had his senses enhanced with chakra while not as effective as Kiba or Hanada's tracking skills with Samahada he was reasonable at tracking, which is why when he heard a twig snap he on reflex froze water in the air into a kanai which was flung at the twig snap, the ice kanai flew into the bushes, Naruto quickly walked over to the bushes and parted the leaves revealing a terrified white rabbit sitting less than an inch from the ice kanai. Don't scare me like that kid, declared Tazuna as he spotted the terrified rabbit. Everyone get ready we have company, said Naruto ignoring Tazuna's comment before pulling Samahata off his back with one hand while the other hand became coated in an icy mist, before anyone could question Naruto. Down, yelled Kakashi as he heard a sound. Everyone bar Naruto dropped to the ground a blade as big as Samahata flew through the air passing over everyone at roughly the height of where their necks were previously, Naruto however jumped back as the blade embedded itself in the tree Naruto has just been standing beside. Zabuza Momochi demon of the hidden mist a rank missing nin former village of Kiri wanted for a failed attempt on the Mizukage's life, spoke Naruto glaring up at the man who now stood on the hilt of the blade in the tree. Hum so the brat knows who I am I'm flattered and what do we have here Kakashi of the Sharingan and Black Smoke Asuma, you two have quite the bounty on your heads, said Zabuza sarcastically when he was talking with Naruto turning serious when he spotted Kakashi and Asuma only for his eyes to lock back onto Naruto and his weapon. Where the hell did you get that blade brat, growled Zabuza glaring at the blonde. From my dead sensei's hands before I buried him, growled Naruto glaring back at Zabuza who had just forced Naruto to remember a rather painful memory. Don't even start Naruto he died happily because of you, came the voice of Akane equal parts angry and understanding in her tone. I know Akane it just gets to me I had to bury the man I called Tusan so soon after meeting him, replied Naruto. So Kisami's dead ha serves the fish bastard right, laughed Zabuza. Hayaten Hyoga Ryu no Jutsu, Ice Style Glacial Dragon, snarled Naruto as a dragon as he created a 50 foot long dragon of ice with teeth a foot long themselves, and said dragon lunged at a surprised Zabuza who only just managed to jump out of the way in time. Don't you dare insult my Tou San, 
snarled Naruto as he began to leak a bubbly red chakra that began to form the rough shape of a fox. Both the comment and the fox-like cloak shocked both Jonin while the cloak terrified all of the genin minus Fu. Kirigakir no Jutsu, Hidden Mist Jutsu, called Zabuza pulling the mist in around him before fading right into said mist. You think my two san didn't teach me this Zabuza you insult him, declared Naruto before he too faded into the mist and a second later a sound of metal hitting flesh rung throughout the clearing and both Zabuza and Naruto reappeared Zabuza with a wound on his side from what looked like Samahata. Lucky shot brat, growled Zabuza holding the wound. If that was a luck shot then what's this? Growled Naruto flipping through hand signs. Hayaten Kori Suraisa no Jutsu, Ice Release Ice Slicer Jutsu, called Naruto freezing the water in the air around him into disc shapes that then flew at the former Kiri Nin who blocked them with his sword. Only for Naruto to then appear beside the blade and slam his free hand onto the blade freezing the blade where his hand laid. Naruto was kicked in the chest and sent flying backwards towards the rest of the Nin but he blonde landed on his feet just in front of them before bolting forwards once more bringing his blade over his head and slamming it down into the Zabuza's blade as he blocked as Samahata hit Kabikirabocho where the ice had formed a crack in the blade spread to both sides of the butcher's cleaver, making Zabuza growl and go to kick Naruto who jumped back before Zabuza could. You'll pay for that brat, said Zabuza before running the blade along his hand making it bleed. The blood flowed down the blade and slid into the crack of the blade sealing it up before it broke. Zabuza then ran towards Naruto his sword in one hand, as Zabuza lunged forward swinging his blade downwards at Naruto who brought his own blade up to block the blade, only for Zabuza to slam one foot on the ground before swinging his other leg around and slamming it into the side of Naruto's head launching him into the nearby trees. Hayaten Harayu no Jutsu, Ice Style Ice Dragon Jutsu yelled Naruto a dragon of ice flying out of the trees at Zabuza who jumped to the side of the dragon only to then have to raise his blade in defense as Naruto slid down the back of the frozen dragon and attacked the Kiri Nin with Samahata. Naruto jumped off his ice dragon landing about 20 feet from Zabuza facing the swordsman glaring at him. Both men lunged forwards their blades eager to clash once more. The two sword-wielding shinobi stood opposite each other glaring. As a cool wind blew between them they launched from the positions forwards swinging their blades around with an arm each, when the two reached the center of the clearing their blades once more clashed, Naruto using the blade lock to his advantage lunged forwards fingers curled into a claw-like shape he struck Zabuza in the gut with his mist-coated hand. Son of, growled Zabuza jumping back and clutching the wound as he felt the temperature of the area around the wound drop. Naru-kun there's someone else in the area, came the voice of Akane. Where? questioned the blonde looking around. In the trees to your ten o'clock, declared Akane. Naruto's eyes locked onto the position but then was forced to block a strong downward swing of Zabuza. Hayaten Shimo Baresu, ice-style frost breath, called Naruto spewing out a cloud of ice that flew towards Zabuza who quickly jumped out of the way of the attack before jumping and slammed his blade down on Naruto who quickly disappeared and was replaced with a log. Where the hell are you brat? snarled Zabuza looking around the clearing. It was only Zabuza's experience as a ninja that saved him as Naruto flew at Zabuza from a high tree branch. Zabuza ducked under the genin's foot and as Naruto sailed over him the former Kiri nin shot his own foot up hitting Naruto in the gut making the boy flip backwards, luckily Naruto flipped far enough to land on his feet and once more lunge at the mist nin. Sweden Swiriudan no Jutsu, Water Style Water Dragon Jutsu called Zabuza as Naruto began to lunge sending a dragon made of water from the nearby lake towards the blonde. Naruto swung his blade down hitting the dragon as it flew towards him and the second the water touched Samahata all of the chakra was sucked out of the attack making the water drop to the ground in a puddle. Naruto then bolted forwards his free hand once more becoming coated in an icy mist. Zabuza swung his sword down on Naruto who blocked the blade with his own and using his forward momentum he slipped into Zabuza's guard and slammed his free hand into Zabuza's gut making the immediate area freeze. Naruto once more before Zabuza could do anything kicked the man in the gut sending him flying backwards, pumping chakra into his back the being the only thing that saved his back from snapping as his back hit a tree behind him. W who are you? Questioned the now semi-delirious Zabuza. Naruto Uzumaki Yuki second monster of the mist, and you're going to die by my hands, declared Naruto about to attack the man once more only for a pair of senbon to fly out of the tree line where Akane pointed out a chakra signature earlier. I thank you for tearing him out, he was a most tricky capture, declared a voice from behind Naruto, 
The boy turned around to see a person who looked to be about his age wearing a Kiri issue Anbu mask and the standard Kirigakir pinstriped outfit which stopped at his knees. Over this he wore a green haori with white trimmings, and around his waist a brown sash with a fringed trail wrapped around his waist twice. He also wore light brown platoon sandals with straps in the same color as his kimono and nail polish on his fingernails and toenails in matching blue-green color. The person's long hair was gathered in a white bun holder, while two locks of his hair fell loose framing his face, bound with metal haircuffs at the ends, Naruto had he not caught her scent would have no idea as to the gender of the newcomer. Naruto knelt down and checked Zabuza for a pulse finding none he once more turned around to face the nin. All yours hunter nin san, declared Naruto stepping away from Zabuza's body, and in a flash the hunter nin appeared in front of the body throwing one arm over his shoulder the nin vanished in a swirl of water, Naruto turned and took a step before he fell to one knee. Naruto called Kiba, Hanada and Fu rushing over to their teammate, brother. I am good just some chakra exhaustion said Naruto trying to push himself up only to stumble a bit before Kiba pulled one of the blonde's arms over his shoulder. Thanks Kiba, muttered Naruto looking at the Inazuka air. No probs buddy, declared Kiba with a grin. How far is your house Tazuna? Questioned Asuma looking back at the man. Not far just on the other side of town, declared the bridge builder. All right we better get going said Kakashi getting a nod from everyone else before the lot of them began walking towards Tazuna's house Sasuke silently glaring at Naruto the whole way. Hashtag 10 minutes later hash the nine people were standing in front of a semi-dilapidated house, Tazuna simply unlocked and opened the door. Tsunami, Inari I'm home, yelled Tazuna. Tu san thank Kami you're alright, said a woman walking out from another room before hugging Tazuna she then took note of the people behind her father. Oh uh I'm Tsunami. Tazuna's daughter, said Tsunami bowing to the ninja. Is there somewhere we could rest? questioned Kakashi. Yes but unfortunately I don't think we can accommodate all of you in here, said Tsunami. That's fine my team and I can stay in the woods nearby, declared Naruto much to the shock of Kakashi and Asuma. You sure Naruto my team can be the ones to camp out, declared Asuma. Well I only speak for me and I find staying outdoors to be less constricting, said Naruto. We'll camp out, declared Kiba getting a nod from Hanada. Well I guess that's that solved, said Kakashi before turning to Asuma. We probably need to discuss logistics so why don't you come with us? Suggested Kakashi getting a nod from Asuma. Alright you three stay here, declared Asuma before he, Kiba, Naruto, Hanada, Kakashi and Fu walked back out of the house and towards the nearby forests, when they found a suitable clearing Kiba put Naruto down against a nearby tree. Naruto, spoke Kakashi drawing the blonde's attention to the man, Naruto nodded indicating he was listening. I have left you alone about your past but, began Kakashi. Do you want to know about me and Kisame? questioned the blonde getting a nod from the man. And I take it that Asuma is here too so he knows as well? questioned the blonde once more getting a nod from Kakashi. Fine but you can wait until Kiba, Hianta and Fu are finished. Those two have earned at least that much of my trust and Fu deserves to know about me, declared the blonde, the two Jonin nodded. After about five minutes when the three members of Team 7 had set up their tents while Naruto explained to Asuma he didn't need one when the blonde noted the confused look on the Jonin's face. Alright you three come here I asked Naruto to explain his connection to Kisame and he said you three can know, said Kakashi to his two other genin as they all walked over to Naruto. Alright you might want to sit down this isn't exactly a short story, said Naruto. It all started about four years ago, declared Naruto looking at the ground. Hashtag flashback hash an eight-year-old Naruto was walking in the forest with a katana strapped to his back along with his bow and arrows, he had been on his own for about a week now and was now heading towards Uzushiogakure. As the blonde walked into a clearing he noticed another person in the clearing this man had blue skin with gill-like parts under his shark-like eyes, Naruto took note of the giant sword on his back that was turned to the blonde as the man was doubled over coughing. Hey buddy you okay? Questioned the young blonde hoping the man was okay or if he wasn't the blonde might be able to help him with his above average knowledge of medical ninjutsu. The blue skinned man turned and looked at Naruto no longer coughing. Yeah kid fine as daisies, said the man somewhat sarcastically as he wiped the blood from his chin. Well okay then, said Naruto turning to leave. Oi kid where's your parents? questioned the blue-skinned man only half sounding concerned. 
Don't have any, said Naruto looking over his shoulder at the man. Then what's a kid your age doing out here in the middle of nowhere with a blade and a bow? Questioned the man. I'm training to be a ninja, said Naruto. A ninja huh? Questioned the blue-skinned man. Yeah why? Said Naruto narrowing his eyes at the man. Well I'm looking for an apprentice you interested? Questioned the man. That depends, what would you be teaching me? Questioned Naruto. The blonde watched as the blue-skinned man reached into his jacket and pulled out a bingo book before tossing it to the blonde. Turn to page 5, declared the man. Naruto did as instructed and opened the book to the suggested page and lo and behold a picture of the man standing before him was on the page marked S rank. As Naruto read the page his eyes grew wider and wider until he dropped the book and looked at the man. I'd be teaching ya everything I know, said Kisame. Hell yeah I'm interested, said Naruto. Good but before I make this official I got two tests for ya runt, spoke Kisame pulling the sword off his back before putting the blade still wrapped in bandages on the ground. This is Samahada, she's got to accept you as a wielder. And then, well we'll get to that if you get past this first part, said Kisame Naruto nodded and began to reach out for the handle until the handle of the sword itself grew and wrapped around Naruto's arm sucking out some of the blonde's chakra before the bandages were ripped off the other end and a mouth opened up at the tip of the rounded weapon out of which a tongue came and began licking Naruto's face making the blonde laugh while the sword made excited sounds and the blonde giggled. Okay. Okay. Okay stop it, said Naruto giggling while the sword licked him. Were he not preoccupied by the sword he would have seen the look on Kisami's face. I've never seen her this excited not even when she chose me just who are you kid? Thought Kisame to himself as he stepped forwards and took the sword from the blonde, the sword whined as the blonde took deep breaths trying to regain his breath. Alright kid, you passed the first test, before we move on to the second one you got a name? It's not every day Samahada except a wielder and I'd like to know the name of a potential wielder, declared Kisame. Naruto nodded and after taking another few deep breaths he pushed himself up and looked at the man. Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki, said Naruto with a grin. Well Naruto Uzumaki get ready for the second test, said Kisame adopting a rough stance with Samahada in his hands. Careful Naruto that book wasn't lying he has enough chakra to be considered a biju, came the cautious voice of Akane from within the blonde's mind. I'm fairly sure I know what this test is but just to be safe could you clarify Kisame-san? Questioned Naruto, pulling the katana on his back out of its sheath. Your second test is to cut me, declared Kisame with a sadistic grin plastered on his face as he sat Samahada on his shoulder. I swear I will pass this test of yours, declared Naruto dropping into his sword stance. Well then come at me, taunted Kisame his smirk spreading wider as the blonde began to charge. I passed Kisami's test and he trained me with Samahada and died three years ago from an incurable disease or at least that's what he told me, said Naruto looking down at Samahada which was sitting in his lap. After a moment Naruto felt a pair of arms wrap around him, he looked up and saw Fu. Thanks Imoto, said Naruto hugging the girl back. No problems Nisan, said Fu with a sad smile as she sat down next to Naruto. Well Kakashi we still need to actually organize who does what when, said Asuma. Well we might as well just make it one day one team guards Tazuna while the other team trains and leave it at that, said Kakashi. That sounds like a good plan, said Asuma. Well as it's your team's mission you can take the first guard shift, said Kakashi getting a nod from Asuma who stood up nodding to Kakashi before walking back to Tazuna's house and his team. Alright guys given we have a few hours before the sun goes down we might as well get some training done, said Kakashi getting a nod from the four genin in front of him. Okay I've been training you guys except Fu for about a month now and in that time I have come to know you guys and how you fight and I have some suggestions regarding your strengths and which of the ninja arts you would excel in should you wish to hear them, declared Kakashi getting curious looks from all of the genin. I'll take that as a yes alright then we'll start with you Kiba, said Kakashi turning to the Inazuka heir. Your greatest strength is also your greatest weakness with you partnership with Akamaru. Should the two of you get separated or something similar you're only half as effective. I thought about ninjutsu but your reserves are at the point you have too little chakra for too much ninjutsu and too much for genjutsu to come easily to you so for Yukiba I would suggest we find out what your elemental affinity is and try and incorporate that into your taijutsu while at the same time I'd suggest you keep your eyes open for maybe a weapon to use that complements your taijutsu, said Kakashi. Kiba had his head down in serious thought contemplating what his sensei said. Kakashi meanwhile turned to Hanada. 
You Hanada your greatest strength is your precise control of your chakra. But your largest weakness is your gentle personality you're too afraid to hurt someone. Now that isn't a bad thing in most situations but when on active duty you have to be prepared to take lives if necessary. But due to your kind and gentle personality you won't. So with that in mind I would suggest for you is to be a support kunoichi hanging back and supporting with genjutsu and medical ninjutsu your precise control plays well with this, and that way you can stay back and avoid most of the fighting where you're just as likely to wind up dead as your opponent is and you can help those who have been hurt in the process, said Kakashi getting a nod from Hanada the silver haired Jonin then turned to Naruto. Now Naruto you have a huge control problem but then with the reserves you have that's not really a problem. You have your ninjutsu and weapons and from what I understand fuinjutsu, there isn't really a whole lot I can actually eat you, said Kakashi about to continue when Naruto held up a hand. You can stop for now Kakashi sensei as while on this mission I'd like to spend my time training fu and perfecting the skills I already have if that's alright with you, said Naruto. I was just going to say I can at some point teach you some water jutsu I know and maybe a wind one or two but for the time being I need to help your teammates more than you so actually that works out great, said Kakashi with a nod. Naruto turned to Fu. Does that work for you Imoto? Questioned Naruto getting an excited nod from the mint haired girl who then wrapped Naruto in a hug, he just hugged the girl back with a smile. Alright let's get started, declared Naruto after the duo parted. Hashtag several hours later hash the sun had just begun to go down and team 7 was just about to begin cooking their food when a kid wearing overalls and a bucket hat walked into the clearing gaining the attention of the ninja. Yes. Questioned Kakashi looking at the kid. Ka Chan says food's ready if you guys want to come in, said the boy before walking back towards the house of their client. Naruto turned to Kakashi who shrugged and got up following the kid. Eating with the family might prove useful in the long run, Kiba and Hanada shorty followed after. Naruto turned to Fu who was looking at him. Are you going to go? Questioned Fu. I was going to ask you that, said Naruto Fu shrugged and got up, Naruto deciding to do the same and the two walked towards the client's house. Dinner was quiet mostly just Tazuna answering a few questions posed by the Jonin and occasionally one from the Genin, however as the dinner drew to a close Inari spoke up for the first time since Team 7 had entered the house. Why do you even try? Questioned the boy. I'm sorry replied Naruto being the one who heard him the clearest. Why are trying so hard you're all just going to die go back to your easy lives in a village far away from the suffering here, yelled Inari. Inari, yelled Tsunami yelling at the boy who was now glaring at Naruto whose hair was down shadowing his eyes the temperature of the room began to drop slowly and everyone began to feel an oppressive presence flood the room. By the time the temperature had dropped to the point that everyone's breath was visible Kakashi had moved to next to his blonde student placing a hand on the boy's shoulder making him look up at his silver haired sensei who shook his head, Naruto turned to Fu whose hair like his was shadowing her eyes, he grabbed the girl's wrist and her head snapped to face him her orange eyes locked with his now frosty silver eyes before he pulled her up and walked to the door. Good night all, said Naruto before he and Fu walked out the door Naruto slamming it behind him. What are their problems? snorted Inari, Kakashi and Asuma literally had to hold Hanada and Kiba back from beating the shit out of the kid, after it was clear that Asuma and Kakashi weren't going to let them go the two decided to follow their unofficial team captain's lead. Good night, declared Kiba before walking out the door, Hanada not saying anything as she followed her teammate. Hashtag with Naruto and Fu hash the two Jinchuriki stomped into the forest away from their camping area not wishing to destroy the area in their rage. Once they were what Naruto decided was a safe distance he let red bubbly chakra cloak his arm before he ran forwards and slammed the limb into a tree. Fook seek, roared Naruto as the tree broke like a twig before being launched backwards towards more trees, Naruto dropped to his knees his head hanging as Fu too took her anger out of the flora around them, red chakra began to flow out of Naruto cloaking him in it. Naruto calmed down, came the voice of Akane. Naruto ignored her and let the chakra continue to flow. Naruto, once more Akane tried to speak with him but he ignored her. Naruto, yelled the woman and still Naruto didn't respond so with no other option she yanked his consciousness and dragged him to his mindscape. Naruto had blacked out and woke up on a grassy hill overlooking a lake with a home next to it, with a path leading away to a stone temple and behind that a giant mountain range, he was very familiar with the landscape having constructed it himself for his tenant the Kiyubi no Vixen or as he knew her Akane Naruto was about to get up from his position under a sakura tree to go and search for the biju when he felt a pair of arms wrap themselves around him. It's okay Naruto, 
whispered Akane into the boy's ear and with that Naruto lost it he broke down and cried he clung to Akane and let all of his negative emotions flow. The two had no idea how long they sat there Naruto crying with Akane whispering words of comfort to the blonde but then again Naruto had many years of bottled up emotion he let go all at once as he had been alone with at most one person for six years and all that time he had to maintain a facade of calmness, Inari pushing his buttons with that little speech on him not knowing suffering and Akane's comforting gestures just broke him, after the last of Naruto's tears were shed he stood up. I'll be back in a little while Akane but Imoto needs me now said Naruto once more applying his calm and collected facade. Akane sighed as he left his mindscape. You need someone too Naru-kun, thought the biju sadly as she waited for the blonde to return. Outside Naruto found that at least half an hour had passed and while he was out Fu had gone a little nuts and semi-destroyed half of the clearing and passed out, deciding he was feeling too drained to face his teammates and more than likely some form of inquiry the blonde pulled Fu into a hug watching the pained expression on her face fade to one of mild comfort, Naruto then leaned back against a tree before closing his eyes and returning to his mindscape while his body slept. The blonde boy was met with Akane who sat much like Naruto for Fu back against a tree her nine white tails dancing to some unknown rhythm around her, Naruto stepped forwards into the biju's embrace. It's just so, began Naruto until Akane silenced him by putting one of her fingers to his lips. I know, spoke the white-haired fox lady as she wrapped Naruto in her tails while gently hugging him. Akane just smiled softly to herself as Naruto relaxed in her arms and even went so far as to hug her back. Akane gently began to run her hand through his blonde locks looking down at the tear-stained face of the boy who had his eyes shut. Once she heard a snore from the boy she leaned down and planted her lips on his forehead. Sleep well Naru-kun, said Akane as she too closed her eyes and began to fall asleep. Hashtag next morning hash Naruto woke up sitting under a tree foo sleeping in his arms. Naruto quickly created an ice clone to substitute with so he could go for a short walk, once he was standing he began to walk out of the clearing, once Naruto stepped out of the clearing he felt a similar chakra signature with his limited sensor skills, narrowing his eyes for a moment, Naruto walked towards the chakra signature. Within several moments Naruto walked to a clearing next to a lake where he saw a girl with long black hair wearing a pink kimono kneeling down picking plants. Good morning miss, said Naruto making the woman jump turning to face him with a scared look on her face before she quickly calmed down. Good morning, said the woman. What's a pretty young woman like yourself doing out here miss, said Naruto trailing off realizing he didn't know her name. Haku my name is Haku and I'm picking herbs to help my friend said the woman a light blush tainting her cheeks. Would you like a hand Haku-chan? questioned Naruto smiling at the girl. If you don't mind and by the way I'm a boy, declared Haku getting a deadpan look from Naruto. What? questioned Haku. You being a boy is as believable to me as declaring the sky is pink, said Naruto before bending down and picking one of the herbs handing it to Haku who looked at him strangely. Please Haku-chan I can smell the scent of a female coming from you but more incriminatingly I can see the bandages you're using to bind your chest, declared Naruto making the girl hug her chest area tight until she realized there was no way he would be able to see the bindings. And you acted like that, declared Naruto smirking when Haku looked at his face, a blush spread across her face as she realized she'd been caught. Don't worry Haku-chan your secret is safe with me, said Naruto with a gentle smile. Thank you um said Haku trailing off once she realized she didn't know his name. Naruto, Naruto Uzumaki Yuki, said Naruto, making Haku's eyes widen. Why Yuki? questioned Haku timidly, Naruto nodded only to have Haku launch herself at him crying. What, what is it? questioned Naruto holding the now shaking girl. Family, I actually have family left in this world, said the girl trembling, making Naruto's eyes widen as he hugged the girl. Naruto quickly formed a pair of clones to continue the herb colleting while he hugged Haku as she cried into his chest. The two just stood there as Haku cried Naruto whispering words of comfort as she cried. As Haku's cries wound down to the occasional sob she stepped back from Naruto who simply smiled at her. Better. Questioned Naruto getting a nod from the girl she was shocked when she was tapped on the shoulder before she turned to see a pair of clones put enough of the herb she was looking for into her basket to fill it up and then some. Make sure Zabuza gets better Haku because now I know my kinsman is involved I will move heaven and earth to make sure you're safe even if that means killing Zabuza, declared Naruto making Haku turn back to him only to find him gone. 
Haku turned and walked out of the clearing feeling conflicted. Hashtag with Naruto hash Naruto walked back into the clearing where he and Fu had slept the night before to find Fu awake leaning on the clone with a smile. As Naruto walked into the clearing Fu looked up confused but then realization hit her one of them was a clone, before she could ask which Naruto the real one spoke. Go get Kakashi and Asuma and tell them I need to talk with them, said Naruto, the clone jumped up nodding before running out of the clearing. Naruto walked over to Fu and gently pulled her to her feet. Come on Imoto we need to get back, said Naruto gently pulling Fu out of the clearing the girl simply followed. The two walked back to their team's clearing in silence, Naruto had a look of seriousness on his face Fu just looked at the boy worried. When the two walked into the clearing they saw Asuma and Kakashi looking at them. Okay Naruto what is it now? Questioned Asuma. Zabuza is alive, declared Naruto shocking both Jonin. How do you know this? Questioned Kakashi. I met the hunter Nin in the forest earlier which leads into my next point which you need to tell your team to Asuma if any serious injury befalls her inflicted by one of you, Konoha ninja or not I will murder you in the slowest possible way, declared Naruto glaring daggers at the other ninja. Kakashi raised a brow, Asuma narrowed his eyes Hanada and Kiba both looked terrified. And why is that Jenin, said Asuma stressing the blonde's rank. She is a Yuki my kinsman, growled Naruto shocking all of the ninja, Hanada, Fu and Kiba scared of him growling along with the declaration the Jonin at the declaration. Naruto then turned around and walked to the edge of the clearing. Where are you going? questioned Kakashi. I have seals to perfect and a rematch with Zabuza to prepare for, declared Naruto walking out of the clearing as an ice clone formed walking back to Fu. Come on Fu Chan we have training to do, declared the clone. I'm not sure it's a good idea to let him go off on his own Kakashi said Asuma looking towards Naruto's disappearing form. I know you go back to your team and I'll tend to mine, said Kakashi, Asuma nodded and walked out of the clearing to give a warning to his team. Kakashi on the other hand created a clone to send after Naruto while he trained Kiba and Hanada. Hashtag with Naruto hash Naruto was sitting against a tree with a scroll open next to him with ink and a brush on the other side and a book in his lap with a pencil in hand, Naruto looked to the scroll on his left then back at his book. That looks about right okay time to test it, muttered Naruto putting the book and pencil down before putting the brush into the ink pot before drawing the seal from the page in his book on the palm of his hand. Kakashi's clone who sat in a tree above Naruto watched closely as the boy painted his skin, once the seal was done Naruto formed a kanai out of ice which he used to slice into the skin of his leg a bit, the clone was about to jump in and stop Naruto when the hand that had the seal painted on it was already covered in green chakra hovering over the cut sealing it up once more. After a second the cut was completely healed Kakashi watched on as Naruto stood up and walked to a nearby tree and slammed his closed fist straight into it snapping and uprooting the tree and sending it back 10 feet uprooting a second tree in the process. Damn it's still not right, muttered Naruto taking his seat back against the tree with his pencil in hand and book on his lap. Not right? You have got to be joking what's he hoping to do? Mentally questioned Kakashi as he watched Naruto once more get up walking over to a tree slamming his fist into it once more snapping and uprooting the tree launching it 20 feet snapping a tree behind the first and slightly uprooting a second one. Still not right damn it, growled Naruto slamming his hand into the ground creating a 10 foot wide spider web crack in the ground. Just what are you hoping to achieve Naruto? thought Kakashi looking down at his student who was once more trying to fix the seal to do whatever he had planned to do. Alright this has got to be it, muttered Naruto standing up once more this time Naruto closed his eyes, after a second his eyes snapped open and he ran forward slamming his fist once more into a tree which snapped into two parts with the lower half being uprooted and sent forwards hitting a pair of trees behind it snapping them while shattering the first two halves while the second four halves into another set of trees uprooting them while the second set of halves shattered into splinters. It was at this point it finally dawned on Kakashi. Wait that looked like Tsunade Sama's strength technique, said Kakashi out loud without even thinking. Yes Kakashi sensei it's supposed to, said Naruto without even turning to face the man, the silver haired clone dropped to the ground. So you've recreated Tsunade Sama's technique with seals? questioned Kakashi getting a head shake from the young blonde. No I've just recreated her technique the seals are to make my control precise enough to pull it off, declared Naruto looking at the seal on his palm trying to work out what tattoo he could use to hide the seal. How did you do it? questioned Kakashi's clone. 
I can't tell you Kakashi it's bad enough I put in so much effort to mimic her technique let alone allowing someone else to do the same, said Naruto. Kakashi nodded it did make sense but the question did really remain just how did Naruto manage to copy Tsunade's strength technique so well. Kakashi was brought out of his thoughts when he heard something being unsealed. Kakashi looked to see Naruto holding a bow. With a flash of ice an arrow of ice formed and Naruto had pulled the arrow back and let it fly before Kakashi could even blink. Kakashi blinked a couple of times before raising a brow. What? Questioned Naruto catching Kakashi's raised brow from the corner of his eye. You've just created a super strength jutsu and yet moved straight on to practicing with a bow, said Kakashi. The super strength is more of a last resort while I plan to use my bow to full potential in my fight against Zabuza, declared Naruto. That's if we let you, said Kakashi. Naruto turned to the Kakashi clone his eyes glowing silver with rage. Kakashi sensei this is no longer just about the client to me I have to be the one to face Zabuza if you want to be right behind me to take over if I get knocked out but I am the one who is going to fight him first, declared Naruto. Kakashi said nothing. Naruto took that as the conversation was over. Hashtag the next day hash Naruto and his team were now guarding Tazuna on the bridge, well his team were he was preparing the bridge for the inevitable battle to come. So just one more time kid with this the bridge won't be able to be blown up, questioned Tazuna looking down at Naruto who was carving a seal into the bridge surface. Yes and no, the bridge won't be completely immune to explosions but most explosions power should be lowered to the point that it does at best minimal damage to the surface, however should the need arise the underside of the bridge is still very much able to explode so if bandits or something are coming you can simply blow the bridge to stop them, declared Naruto. Tazuna nodded to Naruto. Now again why are you doing this? questioned Tazuna. Because Zabuza is alive and I plan to fight him and the fight will more than likely end up on this bridge one way or another and given my own fondness of explosives it would be best to protect the bridge from any possible crossfire, declared Naruto as he channeled Futon Chakra to his finger to carve into the brick to actually create the seal. Tazuna, came a voice from behind the old bridge builder. The old man turned to see a middle-aged man looking very scared. Yes Ryoku what is it? questioned Tazuna looking concerned. I'm sorry Tazuna but I just can't do this I fear for my family and I, said the man stopping when Tazuna held up his hand. I get it thanks for all the work you did just go and stay safe my friend, said Tazuna as the man nodded and left his tools before leaving the bridge and heading back into town. Tazuna sighed as he watched the man leave. How often is that happening? questioned Naruto. More often than I'd like, declared Tazuna, Naruto nodded and made a single hand sign. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu shadow clone jutsu, called Naruto a large cloud of smoke erupting around the man. They may not be the best at building but they'll help in any way they can, declared Naruto. Tazuna just looked on in shock as the 200 clones of the boy looked to him for orders. Keep in mind only I can make this many and only on the days I'm guarding you but they should help you complete the bridge sooner, declared Naruto. Naruto awoke from his position in a tree above Tazuna's house to the sounds of screams. Naruto looked down from his perch to see Tsunami being dragged out of her home by a pair of bandits while Inari was yelling at them. Naruto rolled his eyes the little brat had changed since the night he and Fu stormed out. Naruto was sure that someone had shared some of his past with the boy making him realize he didn't really have a reason to whine. Naruto narrowed his eyes when the bandits pushed Inari away from them before the kid picked up a knife and was about to charge at the bandits. You stupid little brat! muttered Naruto pulling his bow off his back before forming a pair of arrows of ice and launching them at the two bandits heads, neither man saw it coming and in the blink of an eye both men fell to the ground dead, Naruto dropped from the tree to see Tsunami hugging Inari tightly. Th thank you Naruto-san, said Tsunami with a smile to the boy who flashed through hand signs. Kori Bunshin no Jutsu, Ice Clone Jutsu, said Naruto the around them freezing into two clones. Go back inside lock your doors and if you hear a knock send one of these two to answer it, declared Naruto taking off before either Tsunami or Inari could make a comment. I hope I'm not too late, thought Naruto to himself as he rushed towards the bridge, the plan had been for both teams to go to the bridge and confront Zabuza and Haku, Asuma and Kakashi waiting in the wings to take over from Naruto should Zabuza defeat him while the rest of the genin were split between guarding Tazuna and stalling Haku. Naruto having worked out from the injuries he'd given Zabuza and the herbs around the island how long it would take Zabuza to be up and about. I can still feel all of the chakra signatures, declared Akane from within Naruto's mind. 
Akane chan. Thank Kami you're okay, thought Naruto. Why wouldn't I be? Questioned the woman. You didn't speak to me at all for the last couple of days I thought something had happened, replied Naruto. Sorry just had a lot on my mind, besides you could have come in and checked for yourself, replied Akane. I was going to come in later today if you hadn't spoken to me I was really worried, said Naruto, unknown to him a blush spread over the biju's face as she cut the mental link. Naruto burst through the tree line landing on the bridge, but before he could take note of anything he was engulfed in smoke then he felt a lot of pain all over enough to make him black out and collapse to the ground. Naruto, screamed a voice as the blonde fell to the ground. Hashtag several minutes earlier on the bridge hash Sasuke wasn't. Having a good day he like everyone else had arrived at the bridge and much to his annoyance Kakashi and Asuma stepped in to take on Zabuza so Sasuke was left with everyone else he declared he'd face the fake hunter Nin alone his plan being to kill her then kill Naruto for hurting his Uchiha pride but when he had jumped in to attack Haku she had countered his every move and now he was trapped in a set of ice mirrors he couldn't melt with his Katen Jutsu. And unfortunately there was nothing nearby to substitute with to get out of the mirrors the only upside he had awakened his Sharingan. Please just give up now I do not wish to kill you, declared the girl from within her mirror. Well too bad because I'm going to kill you, declared Sasuke. Very well, said Haku with a sad sigh before she shot out of her mirror launching Senban at Sasuke she wasn't really going to kill him just put him in a death-like state like she did with Zabuza but he didn't know that. Sasuke who saw the needles coming at him curse himself he couldn't move fast enough to get out of the way however thanks to his newly acquired eyes he saw Naruto burst through the tree line. Ha perfect you'll serve me some use yet Dobi the needles will kill you then I'll kill her, thought Sasuke as he quickly needed the chakra required for a kawarimi and then switched places with Naruto. Haku watched on in horror as Sasuke was replaced with Naruto in a plume of smoke and he was in such a position that her needles might actually kill him the needles pierced his skin and he fell to the ground his eyes closed. Naruto, screamed Haku jumping out of her mirrors to rush to the boy's side however as soon as she was out of a mirror she felt a presence behind her and turned to see a smirking Uchiha already going through hand signs. You, growled Haku getting ready to charge the Uchiha only to be beaten to the punch by a mocha, white and green blur slamming a fist into the Uchiha's gut launching the boy into the air where he was met with a pair of drill-like blurs who slammed him into the ground rendering the Uchiha unconscious. You ing bastard, growled Fu kicking Sasuke in the gut while he was down. Haku seeing the Uchiha taken care of ripped off her mask before she turned around and pulled Naruto's head into her lap and began removing the needles from the boy's body. What are you doing? Questioned the angry voice of Fu from behind Haku. Removing the needles hopefully Naruto is still alive, said Haku once more carefully taking the needles out of Naruto. But you were going to kill Sasuke how would Naruto still be alive? Questioned Kiba narrowing his eyes at the ice-wielding Kunoichi. I wasn't going to kill the Uchiha I was going to put him in a death-like state but him substituting with Naruto may have actually killed him, declared Haku. Why should we trust you? Questioned Fu glaring down at Haku. He is from my clan the last of my family in this world I could never hurt him even if we don't know each other that well, declared Haku pulling another needle out of Naruto carefully, both Kiba and Fu narrowed their eyes at the girl before Fu knelt down next to her. How can I help? Questioned the mint-haired girl. Gently pull the needles out one at a time, said Haku not really concentrating on the other girl, Fu nodded and joined Haku gently pulling needles out of Naruto's skin. Kiba stood back with Akamaru sitting atop the boy's head both watching for any sudden movements. It took about three minutes for the two girls to pull the needles out of Naruto, as soon as the last needle was pulled out of his skin Naruto shot up into a seated position and looked around for a moment before he noticed he was on the ground with a mask less Haku behind him and a smiling Fu next to him. Naruto-kun, Ni, called Haku and Fu respectively hugging Naruto who simply wrapped an arm around them both, However a second later Naruto noticed the mist on the bridge began to clear. Sorry you two but things need to be done, said Naruto substituting with a nearby log before bolting for the end of the bridge quickly followed by Kiba, then Fu and Haku. As the four of them ran a voice rang out through the clearing mist. Yes yes kill him, declared the voice. Gado, roared the familiar voice of Zabuza. It seems the demon of the hidden mist is nothing more than a title Zabuza luckily I never intended to pay you I hired all of these men for the same amount I'm paying you, declared a short fat midget in a suit as the four genin appeared on the end of the bridge. Well it looks like we're no longer enemies Kakashi, 
said Zabuza looking to the Jonin before spotting Naruto with Haku. You took your sweet time brat, declared Zabuza looking at Naruto before Kakashi could respond to his previous comment. Yes I had been spending the last few days preparing to face you and stayed up a little too late last night but I guess now I can use all of that training to get rid of this mob, said Naruto nodding his head to the mob around Gato. Naruto then pulled his bow off his back before stomping on the handle of Zabuza's sword before kicking it to Zabuza who had been freed from Kakashi's dogs, Naruto then bolted down the bridge towards the mob, Zabuza appearing beside him a moment later. Naruto kicked off the bridge looking like he was jumping over the side of the bridge however a small sheet of ice formed midair which Naruto kicked off flipping upside down pulling three arrows out of his quiver. Pulling the arrows back Naruto let the three projectiles fly shooting towards the mob. All three arrows nailed a different bandit in the head, however Naruto had a little surprise in store. Boom, yelled Naruto and like that all three arrows exploded like a supercharged explosive tag, Naruto flipped and landed on his feet the other side and just behind Zabuza who not to be shown up leapt into the air and went flying into the mob of bandits and began slicing and dicing them as they all stabbed their weapons into the demon trying to kill him. Naruto followed the trail Zabuza laid down his own giant blade in his hands as he cleaved his way through the left over bandits. As Naruto and Zabuza cleaved their way through the bandits Gato got more and more sacred and as Zabuza broke the last line of bandits Gato saw Naruto jump onto Zabuza's back before jumping over the swordsman and the businessman and as if it was planned Naruto once more created a sheet of ice in midair and kicked off it into Gato's back launching the man into Zabuza's blade swing. Hey they just killed out meal ticket, said one of the bandits. Hearing that Naruto bit his thumb and ran the bloodied digit along his kitsune tattoo before slamming his hand into the ground creating a huge plume of smoke appear. Once the smoke cleared a four-tailed kitsune was revealed it was black in color and about the size of a horse. Shadow these bandits are all yours, said Naruto dismissively as the kitsune's ma split into a grin before he took off tearing through the bandits. Once Zabuza saw the bandits were taken care of he dropped to the ground add blood poured out of his body through the many wounds. Zabuza, said Naruto looking down at the heavily bleeding man. Kid I'm a goner but cough before I go I want you to pr cough cough asterisk promise me something, said Zabuza. What is it Zabuza? Questioned Naruto. Haku cough look after her, wheezed the dying man. Naruto nodded to the downed swordsman. Cough cough take my sword kid said Zabuza weakly lifting his sword to Naruto who leaned down and took the blade before after a second the blade vanished in a puff of smoke as Naruto sealed it away. Zabuza sama, screamed Haku as she saw her master on the ground dying, Naruto stepped back to let the girl who skidded to a halt cry for her downed master. Ha asterisk cough cough asterisk ku live well my cough cough daughter, said Zabuza before his head lulled to the side as the light left his eyes and the man lived no more. Two sniff asterisk sss san, muttered Haku as tears began to form in her eyes, Naruto stepped closer and put a comforting hand on Haku's shoulder. Haku looked up at him in surprise before she quickly launched herself at Naruto latching onto him as she cried her eyes out on his shirt, Naruto just smiled sadly as he hugged the girl. The demon of the mist was dead. Naruto and Haku were in a clearing situated away from Tizuna's house, and the clearing that Team 7 had claimed for their time in the wave. It had been two days since the battle on the bridge and since then Haku hadn't left Naruto's side she had been terrified of the other ninja taking revenge on her or something, the feeling had lessened of the past two days but it hadn't vanished entirely. Naruto had not trusted Sasuke in the same vicinity alone with Haku not trusting the arrogant Uchiha to either try and murder the girl or force himself upon her. As for why the two were in the clearing well. So what are you doing again? questioned Haku looking at Naruto who was carving a seal into the ground. I am recombining Samahata and Kabikirabocho to recreate the original blade, said Naruto concentrating on the task at hand of creating the seal. And you know how to combine them and even that they combine how? questioned Haku leaning back against a tree. Because it was created by the Uzumaki clan as were all seven of the seven swords of the mist, in truth they were originally the five blades of Uzushio. Kiri just stole the blades from Uzushio during their combined invasion, and not knowing that these blades were one and only the leader of the five gates of the whirlpool, nor that the Kiba blades are just a pair of regular swords with a Raiden seal on them to convert any chakra put into them into Raiden chakra, explained Naruto surprising Haku. You sure do know a lot about Uzushio, said Haku. Well I should, I spent enough time there, said Naruto. 
But wait if Samahada and Kabikirabocho were originally one blade and you need a seal to put them back together how did they become two blades? Questioned Haku, Naruto smirked. Well from what I understand the gate of the center, who wielded the blade if they were really at one with the blade it could show them how to split the blade into two and it was said that the blade supposedly was basically duplicated two smaller blades with the same powers as the original, however one wielder tried to teach the next chosen wielder how to do it but he failed. That failure in turn split the blade into the two fragments here which the best seal masters in Uzushio then spent months even years on trying to reforge the blade and that's how this seal came to be they figured out how to remerge the blades but they were at war when it was finished so they had no time to reforge the blade, declared Naruto with a sad smile thinking of his fallen kinsman. How do you even know about all of this? Questioned Haku. I was in Uzushio for months I gathered every book scroll and journal of any and all Uzumaki so I found out many things from different journals including some of people who immigrated to Uzushio like several members of the Yuki clan hence my Hayaten and Yuki blood. There were a few Kagaya, some Senju, a couple of Uchiha even a Hyuga or two they just left their villages for varying reasons some wanting to live peaceful life some married into the Uzumaki even some were just banished from their villages for various reasons said Naruto before he put the two giant blades down on the seal Samahada on top of Kabikirabocho. Naruto stepped out of the seal making sure not to disturb the seal Naruto then knelt down next to the seal before channeling chakra to his fingers and slammed his hands down at the same time making the seal and two swords glow bright white. The light was so bright that Haku had to cover her eyes, Naruto however just channeled chakra to a seal next to his eye which darkened his vision making the bright light a normal brightness but everything else around him much darker and with his enhanced vision Naruto saw that both blades pulsed twice before slowly Samahata started to sink while Kabikirabocho rose up from the ground. Once the two blades merged into one the whole thing pulsed gold before the light died down and Naruto let the chakra dissipate from his eye seal and Haku uncovered her eyes. What they saw shouldn't have been that surprising but it was. The blade had the basic shape of Kabikirabocho with scales like Samahata on the flats of the blade there was no hole in the middle of the tip of the blade nor was there a notch in the cutting edge of the blade, the handle of the blade was the same one that once belonged to Samahata, Naruto leant forwards and grasped the sword by the hilt. Samanakuya, shark butcher, as once more whole, said Naruto grinning. Thank you for bringing me together once more Naruto, came a male voice from inside Naruto's mind. So the legends were true you are a sentient blade, said Naruto looking at the sword in his hands. Yes I can however only speak through a mental link, declared Samanakuya. Naruto rolled the blade in his hand a couple of time before sheathing it in the large strap on his back. Naruto ni Haku chan come on we have guard duty, yelled the voice of Fu walking into the clearing. Well time to go Haku, said Naruto offering the Yuki girl a hand, Haku blushed as she took his hand and he pulled her up. Hashtag several days later hash, and you lot are invited, said Tazuna standing in front of all of the ninja, the citizens of the wave had decided that to celebrate the finishing of the bridge along with a thank you for the shinobi with a festival and Tazuna had just informed the ninja of it. Kakashi looked to Asuma who simply shrugged. Sure why not declared Kakashi eye smiling. Great we hope to see all of you tonight, said Tazuna walking away to get ready himself. Well you heard him you lot said Kakashi before he began walking away letting his genin get ready, Asuma left the genin alone too. Well Haku-chan would you like the honor of going to this festival with me? questioned Sasuke stepping up to Haku reaching out to rub her face only for his wrist to be grabbed. Back off Uchiha, declared Naruto growling at the stuck up snob of a genin. Who are you to answer for her? snarled Sasuke glaring at Naruto. He's the person I will be going to the festival with, declared Haku, Naruto cast a backward sideways glacé at the girl before shrugging and glaring once more at the Uchiha squeezing his wrist Sasuke shook his hand free and walked away Fu, Kiba and Hanada watched the Uchiha leave with narrowed eyes, Naruto meanwhile had turned to Haku with a raised eyebrow. Did you mean what you said? questioned Naruto looking at Haku. Yes you're the only guy the first would go to this festival with, said Haku with a small blush on her face suddenly finding the ground very interesting. Haku, said Naruto Haku still looked at the ground. Haku look at me, said Naruto reaching out and tilting her head up making her look at him. I'd be happy to go to the festival with you, said Naruto with a smile Haku blushed and lunged forwards hugging Naruto. I suppose we should all split and get ready, said Kiba looking around getting a nod from all of the genin present. 
Hashtag later that night hash Naruto stood in the clearing his team had claimed. He was wearing just his normal outfit not really having anything else to wear he had given Fu a white zip up jumper with a fur collar that she had left unzipped as she too didn't have much else to wear Kiba and Hanada were both wearing the same outfits as normal as they hadn't packed good clothes. Kakashi and Asuma hadn't been seen since they were told about the festival, Choji and Shino like the rest of the genin wore their normal outfits having not packed anything else. All of the genin minus Sasuke who had already left were waiting in the clearing for Haku to show up the genin looked up when they heard someone approach, they were gobsmacked by what they saw. Haku walked into the clearing her long ebony hair tied into a bun with a pair of senbon keeping it in place however two bangs framed her face, however what shocked all of the ninja was her choice of clothing she wore a ruby red kimono with lipstick to match as well as a pair of heels to also match keeping the kimono closed was a black obi sash and tied to the sash was a mask styled to look like a cat. You look beautiful Haku-chan, said Naruto stepping forwards offering the girl a hand she took his hand with a blush which only deepened when Naruto leant forwards and planted A on the back of her hand. We should probably head off, said Haku gently pulling her hand back, Naruto nodded and stood back before reaching out and taking her hand in his own. Naruto turned around and everyone had snapped out of their various stupors. Let's go everyone, said Naruto with a grin. The seven genin walked into the town, Naruto with Haku on one side and Fu on the other he was watching over the both of them. Once the genin arrived in the village they all split up going their own ways except Haku Naruto and Fu who stuck together well at least vaguely Naruto had many girls from the wave trying to get his attention be they younger than him or old enough to be his mother, however Naruto was with Haku for this festival so he ignored all of them. When Naruto spotted a carnival game he walked over leaving Haku and Fu talking by themselves, Naruto walked up to the booth. Yo hero of the wave what can I do for you? Questioned the man behind the counter. Three shots, said Naruto pulling out the money posted on the back of the carnival game, the guy handed Naruto three baseballs. Each bottle is worth ten points you knock all of them down your score is doubled, said the guy. Naruto nodded and tossed the baseball at the six stacked bottles knocking them all down making man behind the counter sweat slightly. Okay champ next lot, said the guy pointing to a second stack off bottles, once more Naruto knocked all the bottles down making the guy behind the counter go wide eyed before once more pointing to the next set of bottles which Naruto knocked all of them down once more shocking the guy behind the counter and making him pale 360 points was enough to get half the stuff in the stand. Relax buddy I only want the Kabuto Mushi rhinoceros beetle, and the fox, said Naruto pointing to a green beetle looking stuffed animal and a three-tailed white fox. The stand owner sighed in relief and got Naruto the two stuffed animals once Naruto had the two stuffed animals he held them behind his back before walking back over to his sister and Haku. Fu Haku hold your hands out and close your eyes, said Naruto as he walked forwards both girls raised an eyebrow before closing their eyes and putting their hands out as instructed. Naruto the put the kabutomushi in Fu's hand before placing the fox in Haku's both girls opened their eyes at the same time before their eyes widened. Naruto-kun, said Haku with a smile before she reached forwards and hugged Naruto with a smile and placed it gentle on his cheek. Thank you, said Haku pulling back. It's my pleasure to welcome you to our ranks Haku, Fu, declared Hiruzen handing both girls a Konoha headband. Now Fu you have been offered a place in the Abarame compound should you choose, said Hiruzen looking at the girl tying the headband around her upper arm, she turned to the aged cage and shook her head. No thank you Hokage-sama for now I wish to stay close to my Nisan, said Fu stepping closer to Naruto, Hiruzen nodded. As for you Haku-san I could organize an apartment for, said Hiruzen interrupted by Sasuke. No that won't be necessary she will stay with me in the Uchiha compound declared the Uchiha only to get punched in the gut. No she will stay with me too Hokage-sama, said Naruto pulling his fist back from Sasuke's gut. Well alright, for now you two will be assigned to team 7 until I can find another team to put you with, declared Hiruzen. That works for me, said Haku with a small smile. Me too, stated Fu with a grin. Okay well then that's settled dismissed, said Hiruzen waving both teams away. My team I'll see you guys at our regular training ground in two days until then you have off, said Kakashi getting a nod from team 7. You lot same deal, see ya in two days, said Asuma before he vanished in a swirl of leaves, Kakashi did the same thing.
Sasuke turned to talk with Haku only to see Naruto wrap an arm around the girl as well as wrapping an arm around Fu before all three froze and shattered into shards of ice. Sasuke growled and stomped out of the room he had people he needed to talk with. Hashtag with Naruto, Haku and Fu hash the three young ninja appeared outside Naruto and Jiraiya's shared home. Naruto lead the two around the back where they found Jiraiya sitting in a chair with a book in his hand writing in it with his notepad on a table next to him. Hey Oji-san, said Naruto alerting Jiraiya to the boy's presence. Oh Naruto you're back and who are these lovely ladies following in my footsteps already, I'm so proud, said Jiraiya fake crying tears of joy. Hell no I'm not following in your footsteps this is Fu she's a Jinchuriki, said Naruto giving Jiraiya a second. So you're being a brother to her? Questioned Jiraiya getting a nod from Naruto and Fu. And this is Haku she is my girlfriend, my one and only girlfriend, said Naruto glaring at Jiraiya. So how did that happen? Questioned Jiraiya. Well for that we have explained the second mission that we got called on so. Hashtag flashback hash Naruto and Haku stood at the back of a now dispersing crowd of people Tizuna had made a speech about the bridge and the ninja, thanking the Konoha ninja for their help in restoring hope to the wave and now most people were either going home for the night or going back to the festival. Naruto turned to look at the beautiful Haku who was looking back at him they both smiled and looked away from each other. Haku come with me, said Naruto walking away from the crowd of people towards the forests of wave, Haku followed the blonde and the two walked into the forest. After walking for about five minutes Naruto and Haku found themselves on a hill overlooking the entirety of the land of waves including the newly finished bridge, Naruto jumped up onto a tree branch, looking back at Haku he patted the branch next to him, she jumped up and sat down next to him. I had fun tonight Naruto-kun, said Haku leaning on his shoulder. I'm glad you did, said Naruto with a smile wrapping an arm around the girl pulling her closer to him, she wrapped both of her arms around him making him look at her only for the blonde to be even more surprised when she crashed her lips into his, the blonde blinked and Haku pulled back. Thank you for tonight Naruto I mean it, said Haku with a blush on her face. Haku would you be my girlfriend? questioned Naruto. W what? Questioned Haku not sure she heard right. Would you be my girlfriend? Repeated Naruto. Why, why me, we met a week ago and I was up until three days ago your enemy, said Haku. Yes but you are also beautiful, kind-hearted, gentle, and special to me, said Naruto with a soft smile. Hey are you sure Naruto-kun? Questioned Naruto. Naruto gently turned her head so he could press his own lips against hers. Haku's mind went blank for several seconds. Once her mind came around Naruto's lips had left hers. Yes Haku-chan I'm sure, said Naruto with a grin. Hashtag flashback and hash, and that's how this happened, said Naruto, Haku standing next to him blushing looking down. They both need a place to stay, began Naruto trailing off. As I told you when you moved in this place is as much yours as mine they can stay if you want, declared Jiraiya. Thanks Oji-san, said Naruto smiling before turning to the girls and smiling to them before leading them inside. Hashtag several hours later hash Naruto, Haku and Fu were all sitting around a table eating their dinner, Fu and Haku having claimed a room and Naruto helped them unpack their stuff. Jiraiya had gone out before they had begun eating to do some early evening research, as he called it. So the three genin were alone, alone that is until there was a knock at the door. Naruto got up and walked to the door opening it to find a cat-masked Anbu on the doorstep. Nako san what can I do for you? questioned Naruto. Yuki san is to report to the council chambers now, said Nako. Thanks Nako san, said Naruto getting a nod from the Anbu before they vanished in a swirl of leaves. Naruto walked back into the dining room. What was that about? asked Fu. The council want to see Haku, said Naruto narrowing his eyes. Well I should probably go, said Haku standing up. Let's go then, said Naruto getting a confused look from Haku and Fu. They said Yuki-san so there is nothing against me coming and I know what they're going to say and I'm probably going to be the only one to be able to stop it plus I just want to off the civilian council, declared Naruto with a grin plastered on his face, Haku just smiled and rolled her eyes before nodding. Don't wait up Imoto we'll be back soon, said Naruto smiling to Fu before taking Haku's hand as the two walked out of the house and casually beginning the walk towards the Hokage Tower. Hashtag 20 minutes later hash. Where the hell is she we sent for her 20 minutes ago, declared one of the civilians, once they finished talking the doors burst open and in walked Naruto and Haku. 
Well what a surprise to see you here Sasuke still trying to force Haku to be with you I see, said Naruto. What the hell are you doing brat Yuki-san was specifically requested? Questioned one of the snide civilians. Yeah that's why I'm here dumbass be specific next time and given that I'm here I can disprove you of this notion that you think you're going to marry Haku off to Sasuke, declared Naruto. You have no say in the matter, said one of the civilians. Well that's where you lot are wrong, said Naruto. No they're not blondie, declared Sasuke turning to face Naruto and Haku. No they are because you see I am on the CRA too and I am already in a relationship with Haku which overrules anything you can throw at me and Haku and just in case you feel the need to try I as acting head of the Yuki clan would have to agree to the union between Sasuke and Haku and guess what you can all burn in hell. Sasuke is the biggest twat I have had the unfortunate displeasure to come across so I would never allow any of my clan to be married off to him, and as Haku is my first wife on my CRA you cannot try and force the CRA upon her either, declared Naruto glaring at Sasuke for his underhanded tactics and at the civilians for actually giving him the opportunity. Oh and just so you know the Hokage will be told about this little meeting that occurred behind his back and I'm just sure he'll be thrilled, said Naruto turning and taking Haku's hand before walking out of the room. Sasuke grit his teeth glaring at Naruto as he walked out of the room. Hashtag several days later hash the six members of team 7 were standing in the mission briefing room waiting to get a mission. Ok so team even we have catching Tora, painting fences, a member of the council needs someone to watch their child. Oh there's a supposedly haunted house that needs dealing with, said the Chunin. Oh that last one sounds good, said Kiba. Ghosts no thanks, said Naruto, making everyone turn to him. What? asked the blonde not understanding what was going on. You believe in ghosts? questioned Kakashi looking down at his student. No I don't believe in ghosts that implies they aren't real I know that ghosts are real, declared Naruto. Okay I'll bite how? questioned Fu. Let's just say depending on what type of ghost they can make excellent trainers and leave it at that, stated Naruto. Besides why are we doing these D ranks surely there's a couple of C ranks that we could do? supposed Naruto. No you guys need a break from the C ranks for a while, we'll just take the Tora mission, said Kakashi, only for Naruto to jump out of the window returning moments later with said cat caged in an ice cage. They're done, said Naruto putting the cat on the desk. You know Naruto the purpose of the D ranks is to build up teamwork, said Kakashi. Yes I do but our team despite being almost double the size of a conventional team works better than all of the other genin teams and even some pure chunin teams so I see no point in the missions and I am fairly sure that my teammates feel the same, declared Naruto making Kakashi look at the four other genin who nodded to him. Well let's go for some training then given you're so desperate not to do D ranks, said Kakashi leaving the room the genin quickly following behind. Hashtag later that night hash Kakashi stood with the other Jonin in the Hokage's office and to the shock of those around him he was actually on time for the meeting and the Hokage had yet to arrive. While everyone was wondering what sort of planetary alignment had to be going on for Kakashi to be there on time Hiruzen opened the doors and walked in with a pair of Anbu flanking him on either side. Alright everyone let's get this started. As we all know the Chunin exams are to be held here this time around so we need a strong representation of our village's strength said Hiruzen taking his seat. So let's begin the nominations, said Hiruzen looking to the Jonin Sensei. Ikuranai Yuhi Jonin Sensei of Team 8 elect Shikamaru Nara, Ino Yamanaka and Sakura Haruno for the Chunin exams, said Kuranai stepping forwards Hiruzen noted the names and the entire room broke out into whispers mostly regarding the fact that a team of rookie genin had been volunteered. I assume Serutobi Jonin Sensei of Team 10 nominate Sasuke Uchiha. Shino Aburame and Choji Akamichi for the Chunin exams, declared Asuma once more making the room burst into whispers while Hiruzen noted the names. I Kakashi Hitaki Jonin Sensei of Team 7 nominate Kiba Inazuka, Hanada Hayuga, and Fu Uzumaki as a team of three for the Chunin exams and I also nominate Haku Yuki and Naruto Uzumaki Yuki to take the exam solo, declared Kakashi. What? screamed out many of the occupants of the room. Naruto, Haku, Fu, Kiba and Hanada stood waiting for Kakashi in their normal training grounds, Naruto had an arm over Haku's shoulder and she was leaning on his shoulder as they waited. Puff 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 I heard puff you were ba asterisk puff cks sensei so are you puff puff going to start puff puff training me now? questioned tired looking Konohamaru appearing in front of Naruto. Bugger of brat how many times do I have to tell you, am not your freaking sensei, growled Naruto glaring. 
Please please please, wheezed the young boy. No now leave before I freeze you ankles together and leave you hanging from the Hokage monument, said Naruto glaring at Konohamaru. No I want you to train me, said the boy. Kori Bunshin no Jutsu, Ice Clone Jutsu, said Naruto forming a clone. Now off, declared Naruto pointing to exit to the training ground, before Konohamaru could say anything the clone walked up to the boy and covered his mouth and dragging the kid out of the training ground. Good morning you five, declared Kakashi appearing in a swirl of leaves distracting everyone from Konohamaru. Well you five it's time I told you why I'm really telling you no for the C-rank missions, said Kakashi pulling out a pile of forms. I knew there was something more to it, declared Kiba glaring at Kakashi. Chunin exams entrance forms, questioned Naruto not even moving from his position leaning on a tree. Wheel aren't you a smarty pants Naruto, said Kakashi as he handed Naruto and Haku their forms. Now for the Chunin exams only teams of three can compete as teams however I have nominated two of you to take the exam solo, said Kakashi before turning to the two lover birds under the tree. You two are going to take the exam solo out of the five of you, you two are the strongest, said Kakashi, Naruto and Haku nodded. Now most importantly this is an individual decision so none of you have to participate, said Kakashi getting a nod from the genin. Should you decide to participate bring those forms signed to the academy room 301 in three days, said Kakashi once more getting a nod from his team. Alright with that out of the way let's get to training, said Kakashi getting a nod from all of his genin. Hashtag three days later academy hash Naruto stood alone in front of the academy he was alone as per an agreement with the other four genin of the same team they had agreed to not show up together as they weren't going to work together in the exams so the lot of them were showing up in their teams so Naruto was by himself, Haku as she was going would be by herself and Fu, Hanada and Kiba would be together if they were participating. Naruto had decided that if he was going for the Chunin exams he was either going to fly under the radar and be all stealthy about everything or be over the top and intimidating and given the giant sword strapped to his back he had decided the first option was out. So Naruto walked into the academy channeling chakra to his eyes so they glowed an ominous icy blue and at the same time Naruto leaked his some of his ki and heighten chakra in a very terrifying combination. Basically everyone stopped and turned to Naruto as he walked into the academy and up the stairs, on the second floor Naruto saw a large group of genin crowded around a room marked on a sign above the door 301, Naruto rolled his eyes and just walked past the semi-cowering genin to add extra emphasis Naruto pushed enough height and chakra to his feet that the floor froze underfoot as he walked along and up the stairs completely ignoring the group of genin. On the next floor Naruto walked through the halls towards room 301, the blonde heard a ruckus behind him but moved on ignoring it he had a test to get to. Just outside the door Naruto saw Kakashi waiting. Good luck Naruto, said Kakashi getting a nod from the blonde before he opened the door. As soon as Naruto opened the door he was blasted by some of the weakest ki he had felt and he had felt the ki of a civilian mob chasing him. Wow really that's it for a room full of genin. I expected more, said Naruto with a sigh before he dropped his own key in its entirety opening his eyes wide tilting his head to the right and letting a psychotic smirk cross his face while simultaneously lowering the temperature of the room with his key. Within seconds almost all of the genin fell to their knees looking at Naruto terrified, only a dozen and a half, maybe two dozen stood tall against Naruto's key. Naruto took note of the ones who stood tall before walking to the corner of the room letting his key drop before slamming his blade into the floor then jumping up and leaning against the corner of the room while standing on his blade. Naruto just sort of zoned out not paying attention to anything until a huge cloud of smoke erupted at the front of the room making Naruto snap back to reality the blonde watched as the smoke cleared and saw a heavily scared man standing at the front of everyone. Alright sit down and shut up maggots, said the man. My name is Ibiki Morino and I am the proctor for the first exams, declared the man. Now you there is to be no attacking each other unless given permission by one of the proctors and never using lethal force, ordered Ibiki. Sorry this is our first time we're a little nervous, said a voice from the crowd of ninja, Naruto's head snapped in the direction of the voice having recognized it but he couldn't see the owner of the voice as he was hidden behind a large group of people. Now everyone come up here and grab a tab and a test the tab indicates your seat once you find your seat sit down and shut up, declared Ibiki. Naruto waited until most people had their stuff before going up himself, he ended up next to some random aim genin who was terrified. Alright shut up I'm going to be explaining the rules there will be no questions so listen closely, ordered Ibiki. 
You will each start with 10 points and you will lose 1 point for each wrong answer. You will also lose 2 points if you are caught cheating. Also you pass and fail as a team should your points reach 0 you and your teammates will be asked to leave. You will be given an hour to answer the 9 questions on the sheet and then after that a 10th question will be asked. And just so there is no cheating my friends here will be watching as you take your tests, declared Ibiki before turning around to see lots of terrified Jenin just what he wanted to see. Your hour begins, now, declared Ibiki and with that said everyone turned over and began their tests. Hashtag an hour later hash all right everyone pencils down and get ready for the last question however before we begin there are a few additional rules for this question, declared Ibiki. First of all this question is one you can elect to take or not, said Ibiki. What happens if we don't? Came the voice of a random genin. Well you fail of course, declared Ibiki with a smirk. What the hell the of course we'll take the question, yelled out another random genin. You didn't let me finish should you take the question and fail you will never be able to participate in the Chunin exams again, said Ibiki ominously with an evil grin plastered on his face, and like that almost everyone began to pale and people began dropping out, that is until snoring was heard through the room. Ibiki walked towards the snoring his face calling for bloody murder. Oi blondie wake up, yelled Ibiki slapping Naruto on the back of the head knocking him out of his seat. Ow what the hell man? Questioned Naruto glaring up at Ibiki. Did you not hear the rules for the tenth question? Questioned Ibiki. Yeah I did but given their bullshit I thought I'd take a nap, said Naruto standing up and taking his seat. What did you say brat? Questioned Ibiki. Those rules are bull. No one in the elemental nations not even the cage can ban people participating in the Chunin exams. This test has been about info gathering up until now where it's become about the willingness to lead in a no-win situation which I have and besides even if I am banned from this stupid tournament I could always get a promotion in the field, said Naruto calmly before kicking back in his chair. Ibiki looked around the room and saw that people were beginning to grow a backbone. Well that backfired, thought Ibiki to himself as he walked back to the front. Is there anyone else who would like to drop out now? Questioned Ibiki, when no one else raised their hands he sighed. All right you lot you, growled Ibiki in last dict attempt. Pass, said Ibiki. Before anyone could make a comment a bundle came flying through the window before it unfurled and was pinned to the ceiling and floor by four kanai it turned out to be a banner. Anko early, said Ibiki stepping out from behind the banner, it was at this point that Naruto got a good look at the woman in front of the banner. Well it's good to see she's so hyperactive, thought Naruto as he watched the woman he had removed the curse mark from the day he became a genin. 74. You let 74 pass, you're going soft man, said Anko looking back at Ibiki. Maybe we just have a stronger group this year Anko, said Ibiki to the purple haired woman. Well it doesn't matter there'll be less than half once I'm done with them, said Anko with an ominous grin. Alright you lot no time to celebrate meet me at training ground 44 in 5 minutes or you fail, said Anko vanishing in a swirl of leaves. Naruto followed suit and froze before shattering revealing nothing left behind. Hashtag forest of death 5 minutes later hash Naruto stood leaning against the fence as the last of the prospective Chunin showed up. Alright brats I'm Anko Mitarashi the proctor of the second exam. Now while I explain what the exam is some Chunin will be coming around with a form you have to sign before you can participate, said Anko as several Chunin began walking around handing out sheets of paper. Alright this test is a survival exercise. You will each be given one of these scrolls either a heaven or an earth scroll and the goal is to get the other scroll and make it to the tower in the middle of this lovely forest behind me lovingly called the forest of death, said Anko stopping when she heard muttering. Peeft I've seen scarier, muttered Naruto under his breath only for a kanai to be thrown at him only for him to catch it by the ring mere millimeters from his forehead. Anko who appeared behind him had semi-wide eyes, while she hadn't been her fastest speed he shouldn't have been able to catch that. It's ones with attitudes like that, which die first, said Anko with a smirk pulling the kanai out of Naruto's hand. I bet they all just get distracted by your beauty, said Naruto smirking as he saw the blush on Anko's face. Anko just jumped back to her previous position on the fence trying to rid herself of the blush. Now you have to sign the forms which clears us of any wrongdoing should you die in there which trust me some of you will if not by the plants and animals then by each other as you need to have one of each type of scroll at the tower in five days. Now about the scrolls you can't open them until you make it to the tower, said Anko. So hop to it fill out the forms and then bring your team's forms up and exchange them for your scroll, said Anko. 
Naruto stood by himself outside one of the gates of the Forest of Death waiting for them to open. Just one last piece of advice, came Anko's voice over a set of loudspeakers. Don't die, said Anko before the gates were flung open. Naruto casually walked through the gates, pulling his bow off his back before jumping up into the lower branches of the trees of the forest. All right Naru-kun do you have a plan? asked Akane from within Naruto's mind. Yeah spend a day in the forest kicking people's asses and then making sure I have both scrolls before then heading to the tower, replied Naruto before he ran off in a random direction with his bow and arrows at the ready. Hashtag several hours later hash Naruto was tree hopping when he heard a high pitched scream, Naruto stopped dead on the tree branch before taking off for the scream. Running through the trees Naruto burst from the tree line to find a trio of aim ninja standing over two dead kusa ninja and one alive red haired girl who had torn clothes and was more than likely the one who screamed. Naruto she is without a doubt Uzumaki, said Akane. Doesn't matter was going to save her anyway, muttered Naruto notching a trio of arrows one for each of the aim nin skulls, but before Naruto could attack the nin one of the nin turned to him. You guys we got company, said the nin, before his two comrades turned and also saw Naruto who let his arrows fly, only one of the three hit its mark and the nin fell over dead while the other two glared at Naruto. Oh you're dead now buddy, declared one of the nin, Naruto put his bow on his back before dropping from the tree branch landing in a crouch as the ground beneath him buckled as he landed. Is that so? questioned Naruto pulling his blade off his back. Uo scary big ass sword. You compensating for something, mocked one of the two remaining nin before both burst out laughing. Naruto just stood there before a mist was pulled in around them and the two aim nin stopped laughing. I thought he was a Konoha nin, said the one of the aim nin. I'm sure his headband was a Konoha one, said the other. It is but I am Naruto Uzumaki the legacy and second coming of the monster of the mist, declared Naruto's disembodied voice from within the mist. Now like that shit stain I could simply kill you but you were going to rape my cousin so I'm going to kill you slowly and painfully, said Naruto. What are you going to do blondie? taunted one of the nin. Hayaten Shimo Baresu, ice style frost breath, called Naruto breathing a cloud of ice at the two nin, both jumped out of the way however both were caught a little bit by the frost breath their feet both getting caught in the cloud, Naruto appeared from the fog and slammed the side of his blade into both nin, before vanishing back into the mist. Son of a, ah, uh, one of the two aim nin only interrupted when Naruto kicked him in the chin knocking him to the ground and before he could even move two pairs of arrows pierced each of limbs and he began screaming, only for Naruto to once more appeared from the fog only to slam his feet on the nin's face crushing the man's skull. You bastard, yelled the last nin only for an arrow to nail him right between the eyes. The mist cleared as the last aim nin fell to the ground. PP please DD don't H hurt me, said the red haired girl backing away from Naruto. Hey, hey, hey I promise I won't hurt you what's your name? asked Naruto bending down so the two were at eye level. KK Karen Yu Yu Uzumaki, said Karen still terrified of the man in front of her. Karen hey, I'm Naruto, Naruto Uzumaki Yuki, said Naruto with a smile towards the terrified girl, her eyes widen. Yu Yu Uzu Uzumaki. Questioned Karen her eyes wide, Naruto nodded only to be tackled by a red blur. Hey it's okay Karen, said Naruto gently rubbing her back. Family that's all I have ever wanted ever since my mother died, muttered Karen against Naruto's chest. Then stay here I can offer you asylum here in Konoha stay with me Imoto, said Naruto making Karen. Ni san, said Karen hugging him, Naruto himself just hugged the girl while silently creating a clone to find the scrolls. After several moments of searching the clone returned with a heaven and earth scroll to match the earth one he already had. Alright Imoto we need to move I still have an exam to pass, said Naruto. Be but you're by yourself, said Karen. Yes but that's how I entered I'm taking the exam solo, said Naruto. Oh okay, said Karen getting up. Naruto held Karen's hand and the two jumped into the trees and began to run. After a couple of minutes of running Naruto stopped and knelt down in front of Karen. Hop on it'll be quicker, said Naruto, Karen nodded before climbing onto Naruto's back. Naruto stood up and began to run through the trees. So Ni-san? Began Karen getting a nod from Naruto to indicating he was listening. How did you use that Kirigakir no Jutsu, hidden mist Jutsu? I thought only ninja from Kirigakir could use that Jutsu. 
questioned Karen her chin resting on his shoulder. I spent six years training away from Konoha under many different sensei one of whom was a former Kiri Nin and a former member of the Seven Swordsmen, said Naruto, Karen nodded. Who else did you train under? questioned Karen. Not really something I want to get into right now, said Naruto, getting a nod from Karen. Naruto then spotted a trio of Kusa Nin wandering around on the forest floor. Those bastards, growled Karen. You know them? questioned Naruto. They picked on me relentlessly because of my red hair, said Karen glaring at her hair, Naruto put her down. Well then it looks like it's time for these bastards to learn what it is to cross my family, said Naruto, dropping from the forest floor. Oi assholes, back here, yelled Naruto pulling out his bow. And who the hell are you? questioned one of the nin glaring back at Naruto. The big brother of the woman you teased for her hair color, declared Naruto pulling out a trio of arrows and notching all three. You're such an idiot, there's three of us and only one of you, declared the obvious leader. Well, that is true but perhaps you miscounted, said Naruto letting all three arrows fly at the weakest link of the team of three all three arrows hit their mark three spots up in a straight line up and down the chest. Hayaten Harayu no Jutsu, Ice Style Ice Dragon Jutsu, called Naruto a dragon forming out of ice and flying at the other member of the trio of Kusanin. The guy tried to jump out of the way only for the dragon to follow him swallowing him whole before smashing apart revealing the man perfectly encased in ice. Because I only count one, said Naruto glaring at the man who by now was looking terrified. W what are you? questioned the man. I'm your death, declared Naruto ripping the huge sword off his back before running forwards and slicing the man from his left hip to his right shoulder. That was for Karen, declared Naruto looking down before looking for the scroll finding a heaven one. Naruto jumped back up to Karen once again leaning down so she could hop onto his back once she was on again Naruto took off, heading in the general direction of the tower. After a few moments Naruto stopped dead on a tree branch. What what is it? asked Karen. I'm going to need you to go with my clone, said Naruto before flipping through hand signs. What why? questioned Karen because I need to go and see some people who might not be nice to you even with me, said Naruto as the water in the air around him formed a clone which took Karen's hand. Don't worry he will take you to the tower where you'll be safe, said Naruto with a reassuring smile. Karen nodded and jumped away with the clone. Naruto himself turned to the west and began tree hopping. Within moments Naruto stopped and dropped to his knees to hide as he watched three people wander aimlessly around the forest looking vaguely lost. Naruto stepped off the branch and fell to the ground, landing in a crouch with a loud thud he looked at the three surprised people in front of him. And Naruto? questioned the black-haired girl among them. Hey you lot, said Naruto standing up. Naruto, yelled the girl running forwards and tackling Naruto to the ground. Hey Kin how are you? questioned Naruto only for the now crying girl to punch him in the chest. He said you were dead, he swore to us you were dead, where were you? questioned Kin punching Naruto in the chest while the other two members of the team settled for glaring at the blonde. I'm sorry guys but it was beyond time for me to move out I only stayed so long to secure your freedom from the more deadly of his experiments, said Naruto. Why now Naruto why show yourself now? questioned a borderline mummified genin looking at Naruto shaking his hands around. Because I needed to speak with you preferably without him around, said Naruto. About what? questioned the mummified genin. You leaving Otto and joining Konoha, said Naruto as Kin pushed herself off Naruto. Naruto you can't be serious we work for one of Konoha's biggest traitors why would they simply just let us join Konoha's ranks? asked the last of the genin. I'm perfectly serious Zaku, and I am because if you agree to reveal what you know about that snake I can offer you asylum here in Konoha under the protection of my clan and even Orochimaru isn't stupid enough to attack a whole village for three genin, said Naruto. Naruto he, began Zaku. He already plans to attack Konoha yes I know you underestimate me Zaku I still have spies in that village, said Naruto with a smirk. So why do you need us surely your spy can provide all of the information you need, said the mummified genin. I don't need you three for anything, Dosu, I want you three here because you are my friends and some of the very few decent people of Otto, said Naruto giving his mummified friend a deadpan look. All three of the auto genin thought for a moment before looking back at Naruto. What do we have to do? asked Kin. What scroll do you guys have? asked Naruto. We have an earth one why? 
asked Zaku. Naruto reached into his pouch and pulled out a heaven scroll and tossed it to Dosu. Get to the tower as soon as possible and stay safe you three, said Naruto getting a nod from all three before he froze and shattered into shards of ice. Hashtag the next day hash Naruto walked into the tower it was relatively early morning and Naruto had woken up not an hour ago and finished his trek to the tower. Oh Haku chan hey, said Naruto noticing his girlfriend standing just in front of him. A morning Naruto kun, said Haku as she turned around rubbing the sleep from her eyes. I see the forest was no trouble for you, said Naruto stepping up to her throwing an arm over her shoulder. Not at all, what about you Naruto kun? questioned Haku in Naruto's cheek. A kinda boring actually, declared the blonde. Naruto was laying back on his bed doing nothing simply waiting for time to pass he had got into the tower two days ago and he still had two to wait and he wasn't allowed to leave or he'd be disqualified and that he didn't want that. Knock knock knock, then came a knock at his door, Naruto not expecting anyone got up and walked over to the door, before opening it. Hello Naruto-kun may I come in? asked a voice from the now open doorway. Well I don't really have a choice in that now do I? asked Naruto. Quite so, said the person walking into the room, Naruto closing the door behind him. So what can I do for you sensei? questioned Naruto sarcastically calling the man sensei. Oh nothing Naruto-kun I just came to see how my favorite student is, said Orochimaru. Your favorite student now am I thought that position was taken by Kabuto, how is that pet of yours? asked Naruto narrowing his eyes at the pale man. Now now Naruto that's not what I want to talk about, said Orochimaru. Oh what do you want to talk about the fact you want the Uchiha for his Sharingan, or maybe the invasion you have planned? asked Naruto. You seem to know a lot of my plan Naruto-kun maybe I should kill you and be done with this, said Orochimaru narrowing his eyes at the blonde. Oh you wouldn't want to do that I have seals place around this room that record chakra signatures that come and go that only I and the Hokage know where they are you kill me and he knows you're here sooner than you planned, said Naruto with a smirk making Orochimaru narrow his eyes. Trap making sensei I learned from the best, said Naruto with a smirk, Orochimaru glared at the blonde in his compliment. I never should have taken you as my student, declared the snake man. Well then you and your curse mark and some of your other experiments would be so far behind sensei, said Naruto with a smirk. Oh wait, they are aren't they that's right I forgot I left you with those parting gifts, said Naruto with a smirk. Those tags took out years worth of research you little brat, snarled Orochimaru. Yes and unless you want Iwa, Kumo and Kiri finding out about what you stole from them you will leave me alone the length of your stay, said Naruto with a smirk. Orochimaru went to speak but settled for glaring at Naruto. Now I think it's about time you left sensei, said Naruto walking to the door. You win this round brat but I assure you I will win in the long term, said Orochimaru his voice fading as he sunk into the floor. Hashtag two days later hash Naruto stood with the rest of the passing genin all of 23 of them. Alright you lot I would like to congratulate every one of you for passing the second stage of the Chunin exams however I must disappoint all of you by informing you that there are still too many of you in the competition, declared Hiruzen. Please cough cough Hokage sama allow me, asked a sickly looking Jonin appealing next to the aged cage getting a nod from the man. Hello everyone I am cough cough Hayate Gekko the proctor for the third cough cough exams and as Hokage sama cough 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 said there is still too many of you cough 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 here so we must have a preliminary round cough cough so if any of you feel you cannot continue please cough say so now, and keep in mind that from here asterisk cough cough on these exams are no longer a team effort, said now identified Hayate. I don't think I can go on anymore, said a white haired Konoha nin raising his hand. Hayate noted the name down before nodding to the boy who turned around and left. Naruto narrowed his eyes as Kabuto left, he would have to inform Hokage-sama of Kabuto's true allegiance soon. Anyone cough cough else? asked Hayate, when no other hands were raised the man turned around and a panel rose upwards revealing a giant screen. This screen will display the random cough cough matchups that these preliminaries will cough consist of. The matchups could be 1v cough cough 1, or 2 vs 2 cough 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 you may be paired up with your best friend your cough greatest enemy or someone you may not know, declared Hayate before names flashed on screen quickly and an instant later four names flashed up onto the screen. Could all bar Naruto Uzumaki cough cough Dosu Kinta Yoroi Akado and Masumi Sarugi cough please head up to the second level.
asked Hayate before everyone but those mentioned walked up the stairs. Well this is interesting, said Masumi. This'll be an easy win, declared Yoroi. Dosu glared at the man and was about to rush him when a hand landed on his shoulder. He's baiting you Dosu don't fall for it, said Naruto. Dosu turned his head so he was looking at Naruto out of the corner of his eye and nodded. Well this should be fun it has been a while since we fought side by side hey Naruto, said Dosu turning to the blonde who smirked as his left hand became covered by an icy mist just as Dosu's right hand began to hum. Everyone else in the room had wide eyes from Dosu's comment excluding Kin, Zaku, their sensei and Hiruzen. Well it looks like cough cough both parties are ready, said Hayate recovering from his shock. Begin called the Jonin jumping away as all four of the Genin ran at each other. Dosu and Naruto ran side by side at the two Konoha Nin, Naruto ran at Masumi and threw his clawed right hand forwards towards the Genin who bent in seemingly inhuman ways avoiding the strike. Dosu was having the same luck with Yoroi throwing his hand forwards only for the opposing Genin to jump to the side only to then slam his hand into Dosu's chest. W what the? You you're stealing my chakra, said Dosu doubling over as his chakra was sucked out of him. Naruto seeing this threw his other hand forwards slamming it into Masumi's head before driving his head into the ground Naruto diving into a handstand where the blonde performed a split kick slamming Yoroi's face kicking him away from Naruto's temporary teammate. Naruto then flipped over off of Masumi's face spinning in the air landing on his feet facing back to Dosu and Masumi. Naruto pulled his bow off his back before spinning around avoiding a kanai thrown by Masumi before notching and firing an arrow at Yoroi who jumped back to avoid the arrow which impacted the ground. You miss boom, began Yoroi only to be thrown back by an explosion originating from the arrow head, Yoroi landed on his back. Naruto was about to move to avoid the more than likely attack from Masumi only for an arm to wrap itself around his arm and before Naruto could react he found all of his limbs and his neck wrapped up by Masumi. You so much as move boy I snap your neck, declared Masumi. Dosu a hand, called Naruto and before Masumi could make good on his promise Dosu slammed his hand into Masumi's head and the gauntlet on his arm began vibrating making Masumi let go of Naruto as he shook violently and fell to the ground. Kaden Gokaku no Jutsu, fire style fireball Jutsu, called Yoroi shooting a fireball towards Dosu and Naruto. The blonde himself threw his left hand forwards towards the fireball which drew closer to the Auto and Konoha ninja only for the fireball to disappear into Naruto's hand. What the hell how did you do that? screamed Yoroi as he watched his fireball vanish. Fuin Jutsu dumbass, declared Naruto kicking off the ground towards the Konoha Nin before slamming his fist into the ground just where Yoroi was standing and would have been hit if he didn't leap backwards, however that didn't protect the genin from the shockwave of Naruto's attack as the ground around Naruto's fist shattered, cracked, crumbled and exploded in a 20 foot wide crater causing everyone's eyes to go wide at the destruction. Dosu quickly recovering from the shock used the distraction to attack Masumi punching him in the face before then grabbing onto the man's head with his gauntleted hand. The gauntlet once more beginning to vibrate making Masumi's head begin to shake until his ears began to bleed as did after a moment his eyes and then nose, once the blood covered the man's face Dosu threw Masumi at a wall, the Konoha Genin hit the wall face first and a sickening crunch sound was heard as the Genin's body limply fell to the ground revealing the wall and the body to be covered in blood. Naruto meanwhile rushed forwards at Yoroi who was shocked at the sight of his unconscious teammate, Naruto with his enhanced strength he slammed his closed fist into Yoroi's gut sending him rocketing backwards into a wall making it crack in a spider web pattern, the man dropped to the ground clutching his stomach, he rolled out of the way when Naruto once more charged him slamming his chakra empowered fist into the ground. Dosu sit back and relax he's mine, declared Naruto as he saw Dosu coming over to help once he heard that Dosu stopped dead in his tracks, and stood back. Hayaten Harayu no Jutsu, ice style ice dragon Jutsu, called Naruto, a dragon forming out of ice before flying at Yoroi who rolled to the side once more just barely avoiding a painful direct hit from the dragon however it did graze the man's side leaving it partially frozen. Hayaten Kori Suraisa no Jutsu, ice release ice slicer Jutsu, called Naruto 10 flat discs of ice forming around him before shooting off towards a now standing Yoroi. The Konoha Nin jumped to the side avoiding the first disc before jumping over the second one but he wasn't fast enough to completely dodge the third, the ice disc slicing through several layers of skin, and from there on Yoroi's dodging failed miserably getting cut anywhere from a layer of skin to half an inch deep. 
However Yoroi's bad time was far from over as Naruto ran up and once more slammed into him however this time it was an open palm straight into the chest at which point Naruto stopped dead in his tracks, moving his hand away Naruto stood in front of Yoroi calmly. What the hell did you do to me? ordered Yoroi stuck in the same position. Paralysis seal sucker, said Naruto poking him in the head making him fall back. At that moment Hayate once more appeared on the field. Cough cough Yoroi and Masumi are unable to asterisk cough cough continue winners Naruto and Dosu, said Hayate as medics came out to collect the two ninja. Naruto shared a look with Hiruzen who smiled at the boy until he saw Naruto making Anbu hand signs. Yoroi and Masumi are traitors send Anbu after them, thought Hiruzen reading Naruto's signs. How do you know? questioned Hiruzen using the same seals which Naruto observed as he began walking towards the stairs. I met them when I was in auto they are auto spies, was Naruto's response. Hiruzen then signaled for Anbu to be in Yoroi and Masumi's rooms when they woke up or in Masumi's case if he woke up. Anko who stood nearby the Hokage saw none of the Anbu signs having been lost in her own world. Him it could be him he is the only other person in Konoha who I know has any Fuenjutsu knowledge but how would he know Jiraiya-sama couldn't work out how to remove it I have to talk with him, thought Anko to herself. Next match cough 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 Tenten v Tamari please come down here, called Hayate. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.